I miss the CKB. It's not a lost student show. This is a show about a lost student. Wait for more than that. Wait for more. Wait for more than a decade. I've been in this thing we call a legal business. We be back. We in here, B. We are in here. We in here. Yo, y'all see the thumbnail? <laughs> y'all see that thumbnail, baby? Yo, boy. Yo, listen. Bishop was complaining. He said, yo, why is it the media keep putting out these messed up photos of me? It's the, it's the media. Why don't they put out the photo of uh, me being a bishop, me being my, in my get up? I said, he in his get up, right? He, nice smile, right? <laughs> oh, man. So you see Bishop on one side. You see your boy, Jamal Bryan, on the other side. Jamal Bryan on the other side. And you see the bitch, the big smile, baby. The big, the, the smile that you love. Your favorite bishop in the middle, right? It's a reaction that we're going to do. It's an in-person reaction. Where your boy Pastor Bryant interviewed your favorite bishop, right? At his podcast, Get Up, called Not Guilty. Now, listen, it was a lot that was said. It was a lot that was said here. It was a lot that was said here, and I really wasn't going to cover it. But listen, he's obviously innocent, right? Isn't that what the caption? He's obviously innocent. And the question is at the conclusion of this interview, does he have you convinced? But before we get into it, let me get a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand in the chat. Because sometimes I can be yakking and cracking on occasion. Just on occasion, y'all can't hit me. So let me get a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand in the chat. Because sometimes I get the yik yakking and clacking. Just on occasion, y'all can't hit me. I see you, Nikki. Right? See you, baby. I don't know a Nikki that ain't. I don't know a Nikki that ain't. Take that for what you wanted to take it for. I see you, baby girl, giving me my one, two, three shout out. Right? What y'all talking about in the chat? Let me actually, let me, let me go in the chat. Actually, I got a question. I got a question. For the people who saw the interview, because the interview we about to react to, for the people who saw it, whether you saw the whole thing or just a a, 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 a snippet of it. Because I, I noticed people in the chat say, yeah, I saw the interview, I saw the interview. For the people who saw a snippet of it or the entire thing. Did you think about me? Put a one in the chat. If you saw this interview, whether it was the entire thing or snippet, did you think about Mr. CKB? I need to know if I have a connection to you all. I need to know, am I on your thoughts, right? I'm not conceited. You know, I, I'm just, you know, I just, I, you know, I need that attention, baby. I need to, you know, I need... <laughs> well, y'all thought about me. Look at that. I pre listen, I appreciate you. Well, let me see Keita. I got to I got to look at this damn photo of hers. I ain't mean to put your photo up. I got to look at this avatar. Listen, don't mind me, Keita. Right? Don't mind me, light skin. I just need to see. Right? April said, immediately thought about this channel. <laughs> Did you really? I appreciate y'all, man. I truly, truly, truly appreciate y'all. I see Nikki. I, be, I was thinking about you too, baby. Listen, I told you, I don't know a Nikki that ain't. So I always, you always on my mind, right? You saw, you saw a snippet and said, CKB come through. <laughs> oh my God. This is so crazy. I, yo, yo, I, I hate to, I hate to be somebody that keeps saying, I wasn't going to do it. Right. Or somebody that breaks promises, but I swear, son, I have, yo, you don't even understand how busy my days be. I really wasn't going to come up here and talk about this dude. I put this thing in the comments. I mean, in the um, community board and y'all told me to come myself. So I came on side. I wasn't going to, I was going to let it be right. It's already on somebody else's platform. I said, let it be, let, let them do them. Right. You know, I you know, anybody looking on, you might worry about the little old Mr. CKB. I'm on a man, the, I'm the bottom of the total pole. Let the big dogs cover that. So I wasn't going to come outside. And I said, come out. I said, I'll come out. Yeah, Yo, you know what? I have another question. I have another question. If you had the opportunity, let's just say, let's just put Pastor Brian to the side and all of his, his background to the side. Let's just say you were the interviewer. Let's just say you were Pastor 
whatever. And you can ask Bishop one question. What would that question be? If you were in the chat, listen, if you catching this right now live or you catching it on the replay, what, what tell me one question you will put or you would say if you were interviewing him. I just need to see. I, you know, I'm, I'm curious. I want to know if you guys would, would, would ask at least one question that I would ask. Right? And no funny stuff. Don't, don't say, don't drop the soap. Don't say no nonsense. Like, I mean, seriously, like, what question will you actually ask this guy? Right? Watch the interview. And I believe even Jamal knew he was lying. Monique said, I watched the interview, interview and even Jamal knew he was lying. <laughs> uh, we're going to get into all that, son. He's trying to debunk his unk up today. Jamal knew he was lying. Why is he purposefully... So hold up. Why is he purposefully playing with our intelligence? You know what? That's a hell of a question, Shanice. Why is he purposefully playing with our intelligence? See, but that's a, that's a loaded question. That's not a question what a person could say because you need to expound on that, right? Right, you so said, why is everyone after you, sir? Ha <laughs> ha, look at baby. Baby said, why is everyone after you, sir? You got to put, you got to put a comma, put sir at the comma. Oh my God, hold on. Why not pay the money back, man? I think everybody would, I think everybody would ask this one right here. But I, but shout out to your areas. Ooh, let me get a special. I see some. I saw some. Let me give a special shout out to Thomasina for becoming a new member. I appreciate you, doll face. I appreciate you. I need to hold up. Let me see something. Cause y'all, you know, y'all be coming up with these pretty ass smiles and shit. I need to see. Well, I ain't got Thomasina looking all nice skin with that pretty ass smile. I don't, I don't listen. I told you I'm a little crazy. If you don't know, listen, I'm Mr. ZKB. It's not a little stupid show. I'm a little bugged out. Right, I start to say things that I shouldn't really be saying, and Thomasina, that smile, baby, that smile. Listen, I truly, truly appreciate you. Oh, first, of all, I meant to say, so let me give a special shout out to everybody that's pulling. Let me give a special shout out to everybody that be setting me out. One shout out particular is Lakeisha, our uh, our own open book. She set me out over, um, I think, was it Monday, and also another brother, uh, Robert. Robert set me out on a, on a cash app. That over the weekend, I wanted to give you guys a special shout. Out. Let me get, let me get the the dollar signs. Give you guys a special shout out because listen, you know, one thing I don't, only thing I ask for possibly it would be put the likes up, get the likes up. But when you guys set me out, when you give me something, when you super chat, su um, super stick or cash at me, it definitely, definitely lets me know that you actually see value in whatever it is I'm talking about. So I truly, truly appreciate it. And even Thomasina with this pretty ass smile of hers. She became a member. I truly appreciate it. It shows that you want to support the brother. You want to support this little channel, right? What, what Bishop said, he said, he's a nobody. That never, that never is a nobody, right? So, you know, becoming a member and supporting the channel, supporting vibes and all that, joining my little things, you know, makes me become somebody, right? Especially with that smile of yours. You got a pretty fucking smile. Right? God damn. Let me stop. Let me get out of my mind because y'all have me losing my mind, right? So, oh, Susan said, so Susan said, why him? I guess that's a part of the question. Okay, hold up. Uh, CW, that's a hell of a name. It's hilarious. She said, what about the falsified bank records? How do you account for those? Listen, if you ask him, his accountants did it. Remember, it's his team. He got this big ass team, right? He's, 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 uh, he's, in, he's important, right? What else? What else? What else? Oh, special. Oh, look at you. I got to hit you, baby. To hit the pretty smile for a ten dollar holler super chat. Love your podcast. Be out here. Listen, I'm tr we trying over here. This guy Bishop, man. Listen, Bishop for for the most part is keeping keeping things of love. Bishop is just definitely giving keeping me busy. I tell you that much because there's a lot of stuff that I can do. It's a lot of furniture that needs to be moved, and Bishop is uh he's being a a, a pretty hefty. Distraction, but yeah, listen, I appreciate you. I truly, truly, truly appreciate. It. Like I say, anytime, whether it's a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, ten dollars, or a thousand dollars, whatever it is, whenever you guys set me up, it lets me know you see value in whatever it is I'm saying. Whether you attain, whether you learn something, whether whether you like a brother, either way, it lets me know that you're here for me, and I truly, truly appreciate that. Truly appreciate that. Hold on, somebody got blocked? Did somebody get blocked? Hold on, let me see. What's Simone said? Simone said, he blocked me because I said he keep playing in people's face. And they, or a, <laughs> he called me a hater. <laughs> Yo, listen, I mean, so if you could, I don't know where you're going to pop back up in the chat, but if you could, how long does it take him 
to block you? And, and it's people in general, how long does it take him to block you? Is it like an immediate thing? Is it like he's like, like, like he's talking about something and like soon as he see, is this block? Or is like he doesn't necessarily pay attention to the chat because sometimes this chat be flying and I get the I get the talking and I'm not necessarily paying attention to what you're saying, right? So I'm curious about that for the individuals who fell victim to the block. How long does it take you to get blocked? <laughs> block me quickly. <laughs> Special shout out. Listen, Thomasina, baby. Thomasina is coming through with the ten gifted memberships. Listen, if you can, please, if you can. Put Thomasina's name in the chat. More importantly, put Pretty Smile in the chat if you can. I truly, truly, truly appreciate Thomasina, especially if you get a gifted membership. Shout that Pretty Smile out. Oh, let me look at this smile again. Because I'm, you know, let me get, let me get closer. All right, closer. Let me see. I'm seeing this little smile of hers. All right, I see you, Shawnees. Time I'm seeing in the smiles, shiny. So everybody up in the building. All right, let's get to it, B. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right, so listen. Y'all know why we're here. Listen, if, you, if you're new to the channel, right? At least if you're new to what's happening with Bishop. Last month, he got convicted of a five-count indictment. It was a federal indictment that spanned between wire fraud, attempted extortion, and lying to the boss. Right? Pursuant to Title 18 USC, 3584, he's facing a load of time and fines. The indictment spans from five separate and distinct events. The first count was a real estate scheme where he forcibly convinced Pauline Anderson, a victim, of entering into this, into this real estate scheme to invest her money, $90,000 to be exact, in various properties. Count two is he was he was convicted of attempted extortion and that extortion being an individual by the name of Brandon Belmonte. The government proved that Bishop in some kind of deal that he had with Brandon Belmonte to reimburse him for real for a, a rental car or a rental truck. Brandon essentially reneged. Bishop got mad and he threatened him with physical violence and that in itself made the elements to that attempted extortion. Third count was a real, another real estate scheme that Bishop essentially perpetrated on Brandon Belmonte after the fact that he threatened to jack him up for that real estate, I mean, for that rental payment. The government showed and proof that Bishop entered into this deal, this real estate scheme, to in exchange for half a million dollars that he will line Brandon Belmonte and whatever, whomever else he was with, with his um, relationships. He was going to levy his relationship with the New York City Mary Eric Adams to allow them to have access to different kinds of real estate uh, developments and such in exchange for the half a million dollars. The fourth count was, um, as you know, the false statement where it's alleged and proven that uh, the feds, during the search warrant, when it was executed, an actual search warrant on this person, they asked Bishop whether or not he had a phone or whether or not he had a phone in which they can call him. According to Bishop, according to the feds and according to the prosecutor, Bishop said no. That in itself was tantamount to making a false statement. And the last one was count five, which is another scheme, but it was a different kind of scheme. It wasn't real estate this time. It was um, a scheme to rip off banks. And that, that scheme was to uh, submit false documents, which meaning false bank statements to say that he has this amount of money to get this kind of bank loan. I think the bank loan was for $250,000 and those statements was fraudulent and they ordered ass. Now, when you tally all of that up, the wire frauds in itself carries uh, a, at most 20 years together with a $250,000 fine. The extortion carries 20 years. Whether it's attempted or not, it carries 20 years, as well as the um, false statement that carries five years. So when you tally all that up, he's looking at 85 years plus $750,000 in fines. Will he get that? I doubt it. You know, I don't think anybody get the max max of anything. He may get a higher number, but he's definitely not going to get no 85 fucking years, despite his background. Now, Sinison is set for July 1st. He has some things pending. You know, he has a Rule 29 motion as well as a Rule 33 motion. The 29 motion is a motion to set aside the jury verdict. Rule 233 motion is a motion for new trial. We covered that. We covered the government's response. 
Now it's up to the court whether or not Judge Goldfield is going to grant grant it in entirety or in part or just outright deny it. And he's going to have to take his talents up to the appellate court in the circuit sec- to Second Circuit while facing while serving his time. That's on July 1st. Nine times out of 10, she's going to rule on that motion on the date of her sentencing. Nine times out of 10. And I don't know, you know, some lawyers are under the impression that if a judge, if you file a Rule 30, 33 motion, a Rule 29 motion, and a judge wait till the day of sentencing to answer or to rule on it, it's going to get denied, right? Some lawyers say, well, if they rule on it beforehand or rule on it kind of not too long after the submissions are are, are, are are handed out, they likely grant it. But that, you know, that's, you, it's no evidence to suggest either way. The judge c- could wait to the very day after after it hears everything to rule on it, wait till after it hears the um, preliminary, excuse me, the pre-sentencing investigation rule. On. It's no real tell, there's no real tell. Either way, what he has, what he has in front of him is this damn sentencing together with, with this, um, these motions. Is he going to get rhythm? I doubt it. You know, those motions is extremely hard to win. I've never won one. I don't know if I know anybody that won one. Um, the closest I've came to setting side of the jury verdict was I had a I did a jury, I did a motion in three thirty thirty, which is in a state court, and it was for a case where this kid he got convicted of selling candy wax, and I got that count um, tossed out. But he still did his. He did still got sentenced, and he went up north for like twenty some years. But so you know, what what did that actually solve? Either way. That's him, and we're talking about Bishop. So, uh, I don't know when Bishop shot this, but it was released today. And when I say this, I'm talking about this particular interview, right? And what is this interview about? This interview is essentially, according to Bishop, his first time talking about his incident, despite the fact that he belaboredly talks about it. According to Bishop, he's going to give you an inside scoop and reveal certain information even though he has revealed all of the same information. But he did say some stuff that I never heard before, at least the, the, the way in which he arranged his facts and, and certain things that he said I never heard before, at least coming from Bishop. And more importantly, it's certain things that he said I think need clarity because he's, he's, he's belaboring uh, particular events that happened in his trial. And taken out of contents, you would believe that he... You know, he was wronged. And, you know, I'm a proponent for somebody having a due process right to a fair trial. I'm a proponent of, find, you know, innocent until proven guilty. I'm a proponent of that. I'm a, I'm a defense guy. I'm a defense first guy. I'm not prosecution from a defense first guy. So I'm a proponent for somebody to get their due course in court, right, without being violated, without it playing any games, without, you know, any riffraff or what have you. Bishop, on the other hand... He's making certain allegations. He's making certain representations that I think need clarity on. And when he makes those representations, I'm going to obviously chime in as we react to this film. So enough about all of that. Let's get to it because you guys didn't come here to talk about the listen to me just jabber on about the bishop. Let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. So let's go. Family, welcome to the Jamal Brown. Let me know if y'all can hear this, by the way. Today, we're going to get some clarity. Just because you heard it doesn't mean that it's true. Just because you think you know doesn't mean that it's real. Today we are going they already to start. Just because you think you know don't mean it's real. They're already starting a bullshit, but let's continue. ...conversation with one of the most discussed spiritual leaders in America today, Bishop Lamar White here. Welcome, brother. I'm Man, glad to have you. Thank you for having me here, brother. Oh, no, this is a, a pop-up conversation. Uh, in this, our first season, we have never been to anybody's home. Wow. Uh, so thank you for opening up your doors and uh, allowing us to come in uh, and trusting us in this space. I'm grateful. Man, I'm grateful that you have me here, brother. Yeah. And um... Let me stop it right there. <laughs> I ain't mean to stop it so fast. I want this thing to play. I want this thing to weigh on you. But just so you could be clear, like I said, Bishop, well, fuck what I said, like Bishop said, Bishop is starting his own podcast called Not Guilty. Now, the scene that they're in is actually at Bishop's site. So I just wanted to give you some briefings of that. Let's continue. Thank you for opening your platform for me. No, absolutely. I wanted uh, the world to be able to know you, not from a soundbite, uh, but for you to uh, really just have your own open heart surgery uh, live on the podcast. Yeah, right. Man. Uh, you came to uh, national uh, attention just two years ago. And uh, all of America in one Sunday 
was introducing a crash course on who they thought was Bishop Whitehead. Yeah. I, I want to go backwards in our discussion uh, today. Talk to me first about the Sunday morning robbers came into your worship. Oh, man, wow. First of all, I, I, like I said, I thank you, man, for um, allowing me this platform and yeah. um, giving me the opportunity. Um, the robbery. Yeah, you know it's something? Yeah, I, I actually didn't notice that. Let me put it side by side. I literally never noticed these big ass. I never noticed. You know how vain you got to be to have that? I never noticed that. That is a hell of a, and I'm very observable. Uh, I'm very observable. Like I observe shit. I see shit. I've never noticed that. Go, you know how vain you have to be. To ha and then it's like, it's not just one. It's They side by side. Hold up. You know what? Let me, let me pull my what's in my, what is that? Where's that damn, um, let me pull this down. Where's that? What's the name? I never noticed that. Hold on, hold on. Let me see something. Where is this damn uh, thumbnail at? Hold on, let me see. I got to put this damn thumbnail in this shit. Hold on. Where the hell is it at? Uh, boom, 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 boom. There we go. There we go. Let me put this here first. And then let me put, actually, let me put it here. Look at this shit. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to show my thumbnail right quick. <laughs> I had to put this down. Now, I never noticed this side by side thing. Actually, that's not, that's not even a better a good picture because you can't really see what's going on here. Let me see. Hold on, hold on. Where's another picture? Let me see if I can find another picture. Of this, of this Joker. Let me see. Do I got another picture? Yeah, that's not enough. That's not a good picture. Damn, I can't. I don't have another picture. But I never noticed this side by side thing. Y'all see this? This side by side thing. I never noticed these two photos here. I noticed it, but I didn't notice it. I don't know why I got another picture. I thought, oh, actually, I have a screenshot of it. Let me see. Let me pull this down. Here we go. No, that's not it. Is it? Here we go. That's a better picture. I never noticed this side-by-side -side thing, kid. Like, I, that shit is so crazy. <laughs> we see them ugly pics. Stop acting like you ain't in love with your bishop, AJ. But yeah, that is really, really, really crazy. I never noticed that. Like you have to be so vain to do that. Anyway, let's get let's continue. Let's continue. Hold on, where's it at? Here we go. So, um, so on that Sunday, you know, we were having communion Sunday, yeah. and um, you know, my deaconess was in there white, deacons was in there black. We all had our robes on, and um, um, I was uh, in the pulpit, and praise and worship had just ended, and um, I get up and I literally was in the pulpit for maybe nine minutes. And um, I'm in the pulpit, I opened my Bible, I started to pray, and um, I'm looking at the um, parishioners, and um, I can see everything that happens first, Yeah, you know, because everybody have their back turned to the door. By and chance, were you going to the story by chance, I know it's a long time ago, do you have any memory on what you were preaching that Sunday? You know, um, I was preaching, so... I forgot the topic of it, but I know that I was preaching from a subject saying that in order for you and in order for me to preach something to you, I have to go through it first. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And what I was saying was um, God allows leaders to go through an experience in order to teach you, mm. you know, and literally once I started to get into the sermon, um, and I never said this to no one before, but there was like a, 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 a rushing, like wind, like a, a hot type of wind and <laughs> the door opened, but the door opened so suddenly, yeah, you're hilarious. Like nobody opens the door like, like that. All right. And it's so suddenly Then I just seen, I saw three men like low saying, everybody, nobody moves, nobody move. And when he did that, I immediately my spirit said, get down because they want you, mm. right? Yeah. And if you get down, everything going to be all right. And it happened in a split second in my head. And I said, all right, 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 right. To alarm and alert my yeah. team, my people. Right. Like, all right, 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 right. Like, I'm going to get down. Nobody do nothing. All right. Let me ask you something. Y'all remember the video? Y'all remember the robbery? Put a one in the chat if you actually remember. I mean, the details of it. Like, like. Like if you could remember the specific details, like we all remember the robbery happened in July of 2022, but the particular details. My question is, 
when he said, all right, all right, all right, when he was on a stage saying, all right, all right, all right, do you think he was saying that to alarm his team or whatever group or whatever it is that he loves to keep saying? You think he was saying that or you think he was just on some, yo, don't, don't hurt me. Like you got it. Like, you know, when you kick somebody ass and all right, all right, all right. Right. You beating, you beating your baby. All right, all right, all right. Is it because he was afraid or because he was trying to alarm people? Right. Put a one in the chat if you think he was afraid. Put a two in the chat if you if you think he was alarming someone. Right. Because I have a subsequent question to that. My subsequent question is. How the hell do you think these people would know? When you said, all right, that means don't get along. It's gunmen coming up in the spot. That's my question, right? If you're saying all right to alarm everybody, to let people know that, listen, if they coming for me, I'm going to get down. Don't worry about nothing. Y'all good. How in the fuck would they know that is the signal? Just saying, just a little things. Right? Because people just start saying, all right, all right. I'm not going to know they mean, yo, you know, the gunman is pulling up. Right? I don't know what the hell they mean. All right, all right. I'm going to think he's a Kevin, he's doing a, a Kevin Hart parody or something. You know, I can, all right, all right, all right. I, I would think he's, a, you know, he's playing, you know, he's a jokester. How would anybody know that? I wouldn't know that. I'm from the mix. I wouldn't know that. Right? I'm just saying it's little, it's little, it's little, little things that are, that are, you know, I'm just saying, you know. I don't mean to ask no questions. I just want to know. You know, so I got down, I lay down, and I'm watching. Um, I'm watching them position themselves. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, so it makes me mad. Yeah, no, I get it. Because where I'm from. Yeah. I ain't never been robbed in my life. Wow. Is this nigga crying? So. Is this, look, is this nigga, is this neat? Is he crying? Is that tears? Is this an act? Put a one in the chat if you think this whole interview is prearranged prescripted put a one in the chat if you think this whole interview was a script that they're following put a two in the chat if you think this is a genuine heartfelt heart-to-heart -heart interview <laughs> yo 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 yes yo listen y'all don't give this lame no space <laughs> what Keita said, Keita said in the word goes to, y'all don't get this dude no space. Like y'all be, y'all be all on this motherfucker's neck. It's like, this is his neck. Y'all don't get his lame no space. All right, so Babs. I can't answer that. I can't answer that. I want to answer you, champ. I want to answer you, champ, but I can't. It's actually, you know what? Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Hey yo, listen, 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 listen. I'm actually at a I'm actually doing something right now. I can't talk. But listen, I wanted to talk. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me finish what I'm doing and then I will um take you back. Ah, ah. I had to take that call. I apologize. So 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 let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. I asked whether or not you think this was pre prescripted. I asked whether or not you think this was prearranged. I asked whether or not you think this was all a setup. My follow-up question is, do you think Bishop is going to follow 
the script. Right? You saw how he was when he testified. Right? You saw how he was all over the place like a goddamn squirrel. It's all over the place. I want to know if he's going to follow or he's going to derail off the script. Right? I will point some stuff out. Yeah, I don't think people paying attention to. Right? <laughs> I will point some stuff out. Let's continue though. Let me let me let's go back to the to the to the to the ultimate question. Is that real? Is that real? Put a one in the chat if you think that's real. Put a two, put a, put a one in the chat if you think that's real. Put a two in the chat if you think that's fake. He's gonna jump away. Y'all don't think it's real? Jay, I'm telling you, y'all not giving your bishop no space. Y'all not giving a bishop no space. All right, so so uh, so Janelle, Jan all right, okay, okay, yeah. Y'all don't think it's real. All right, all right, come on. Let's let's finish. Let's let's continue on with the bishop. Your favorite bishop. Um, what is more angering for you that it happened, or that within the hour? Everybody acted as if it was manufactured. You know, my thing is this, right? If you're going to rob me, you ain't had to do it in there, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you, like I'm, I'm, I, I'm outside, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a different type of preacher. Like I'm f to the streets, I'm to regular people. I'm walking through projects yeah. with all my jury out. You know, like if you wanted to do something, you had a gun. Yeah. Why are you going to come? into God's house, yeah. you know? Why are you going to come to people and we, we're unarmed, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm laying down there and I'm watching how these dudes form. One dude had a door, one other guy came straight to the pulpit and one dude went straight to my wife mm. and my eight month old daughter. Wow. So I'm watching this. So the one guy came and he started taking, he took my wedding band off, he took my bracelet off and he took my watch and, um, and then there's one guy in front of me, because my wife was sitting in front of me, and he got the gun to her face. Mm. So me now, in my mind, like, yo, you know who you are? Why are you letting this happen? Right. And all this stuff is happening in a split second. Right. And then I'm hearing, don't move, because if you move, it could be, it could be fatal. Mm. So, but I'm seeing a gun in my wife's face. Yeah. And then I see him taking her earrings, and then he transferred the gun in his other hand, and now it's in my daughter's face. Wow. And my daughter's eight months old. So my wife put my daughter like behind her, beside her. And then the guy that was taking my stuff off, he leaves. The one that. I have a question. Just have a question. Just a little thing. Just little things. Let me show you something. Let me just show you something. If, if y'all don't mind. Right? If y'all don't mind. If y'all don't mind, I'm gonna I'm, let me just share the screen, right? So you heard that narrative they just gave as to what his wife did and how he did, and the, you know, and a ninja and a kia that went happen. This I'm not gonna play it. I'm just gonna like scroll through it that way you can see how it unfolded, right? So obviously he was sitting there, right? That he saw them coming, right? He's only looking up, right? Because hold on, let me just actually so you guys can see it. Straight clearly. So I'm gonna go closer. Actually, hold on. So, so you see him get down. He's only looking up, right? Hold on. Right. He's looking only at the gunman allegedly, right? Then he gets all the way down. Now, I'm spat fast forwarding because I don't know this this thing. I don't know if they have copyrights. Where's his eyes? Y'all see this? Actually, let me go closer. Y'all see this? Where's his eyes at? Right. His eyes is actually at the gunman, right? His eyes is actually at the government. Now, it actually, that's not the whole script. That's not the whole video. But he said that while the government was coming in, they had him, they, they, they ran down on him. And immediately his wife started to take these precautionary safety measures to his kid. And all of this up started to happen. How would he see that? How would he know that? Because if his wife is on his side, right? That's what he said. If his wife is on his side, but as you can see where a, the with a two, two is at, his eyes is looking up at the gunman. How could he possibly see that? 
right? How could he possibly, if his wife is somewhere on the side, but his eyes is facing where the gunmen are coming, how could he possibly see that? Like, it sounds good, right? I would like to believe that, you know, when, when, when it's happening, that your people's is going to, you know, you know, people know what to do, when to do it or whatever. But, right? And then it's like, if you look at it, like, like let me go back to it. Let me go back to it. When you look at it, the, 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 the dudes with the pistols and all that was on them immediately. Like, I'm just going to skip a bit. Like, he's still on the ground, right? I don't know what your man over here is doing. I still don't know. He, I know he had, I think he was eating pistachios, but that's a whole separate and distinct conversation. But they still, and you see the gunman on here. So they, his eyes is on these guns. This is a gunman figure. His eyes is on a gunman, right? His eyes is on a gunman the whole time, right? They're yapping him. They're taking his stuff, right? How is he, where did he see that at? Like, like, like you know, he's looking. His eyes is on a gunman the entire time, like the entire time. Right? Look, his eyes on the government. His eyes on the government. He's all right, all right, all right. He gets down, right? He gets down. His eyes is on the government the entire time. When does he have the opportunity to see any of this Chuck Norris shit that he just ref that he just said? Despite the fact that his team on the corner eating his pistachios and Mikey Knights. I'm just saying, I, you know, I'm, look, I'm just, I want to know that. I'm not saying he partook in his robbery. I'm not saying he orchestrated the robbery. I'm not saying that he had any inkling of a connection with the robbery. I'm just saying the facts aren't lining up, champ. I just need to know how you know these little things. I want to know, first off, I want to know how you know how that all right, all right, all right means get down. That's what I want to know. That's that's the first question. But the second question is how they, how, how you seeing all this, right? Look what Lab said. His wife was on the side. If his eyes is focused on the government as it should be, right? Man running down you with the pistol on you, you should be looking at him, right? At least that's what your, your first instinct, this flight of flight thing that you have with you, he didn't fight. He, he, he lay down. So it's fear, right? So if you're fearing your life, of course you're going to look at the Grim Reaper coming towards you. So how are you seeing all this? I'm just saying it's the little thing. I don't know, man. It's the little things. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to the to the to the to the interview. Was um, that had the gun in my wife's face? You would think he left too because it was another. It was a guy that was already on me. But no, he gets he comes back around. He comes up and he say, "I know you got more." Mm. So he got the gun to my head. So he. Um, they didn't take my, my, um, apostles ring. The other guy just took my wedding band, my watch and my bracelet, but he left my ring on. So he was like, give me this, give me this right here. And he took my, uh, apostle ring off. And then he took my, um, I had a Cuban with my cross on. He took that off. And then he was like, where, where, where is that? What else you got? What else you got? So I had my clergy collar on. So I had my other chain underneath my, um, my robe, my, yeah. my shirt. And this chain was bigger. This chain was uh, uh, my, my big Cuban link. And um, this was the chain that I had was 100 carats. It's underneath my, my vest. And um, so he started tapping. Where's that? Where's that? It's that? So I know this is some type of setup. Mm. So he tapping, tapping, tapping. He said, yeah, yeah. So he grabs my clergy collar and start yanking me, yanking me, yanking me. And he, 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 he can't yank this chain off. It's triple lock. You know, he's like, take it off. So I took it off and he took it and, um, and he ran out. And when he ran, I jumped up, he hit the door and I went behind them. And my thing in my mind was, I gotta get in my truck and I'm gonna run them over. Yeah, I'm gonna run them over. All I need to do is get in my truck. All right. so I run downstairs and I forgot my key upstairs. So my arm barrel ran up, I said, get my key. He came and got my key. I saw which way they went. So I jumped in my car, my deacons jumped in the car, two of them, and I made a U-turn. Cause I know they can't outrun the car. Right. So I make a turn, you turn, then I make the right turn and I'm looking, looking like they can't, they couldn't go too far. They could, they could not. So I'm right. driving, 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 driving. So we drive about two, three, maybe, yeah, maybe four blocks down. And then I make a U-turn and come back. So now the police is there cause this happened online. Yeah. So the police is there and I see them, I come back to the block and I see the police talking to regular uh, 
uh, bystanders. Yeah. And I wrote a window down. Let me stop it right there. Somebody says something that's so important that I was going to get into after he finished this um, freaky Zeke story. After he finished his freaky Zeke story, I was going to say something, but somebody jumped the gun and hit it. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that uh, comment at? Where's that comment at? I'm going to find it. Somebody said something. I was like, oh, man, they caught it. Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? It's probably a man. Oh, it's, that was a woman. I'm surprised a woman said that. He didn't even check on his wife. If somebody robs your loved one, right, with a pistol, like, give me that. You mean to tell me you're not even going to, and then your, your eight-month-old baby, you mean to tell me you're not going to tense it up? And then more importantly, like, what are you supposed to do? If these people come in here with hammers, like, what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? Let's just say you caught them, right? Let's just say you, you, you was able to run up to them and catch them at the door. Then what? Like, what you going to do? Right? But more importantly, like, that, you, you know, like, for your people to go through a traumatic event like that, right? Like, listen, they took your jury or your jury, as according to him, they took his jury and they left. Like, like, what are you going to do? Why not, why not tend to the people that was just traumatized? I would imagine they never went through nothing like that. At least I would hope not. Was it the fact that your jury was leaving and you were so prone to getting your jury back that, you know, what was going on with your peoples wasn't important? Was your jury more important than your people? It's like, what? I, I... It's a little stuff that I, I you know, I, I question about. I'm, I'm curious about. Like, how does that happen? Right? Right. They didn't take money. They took, they, and, and regardless of what they took, they had pistols on them. Like, like what you think is going to happen if you run, if you, and let's just say, say you hit him hit him with the truck. What you think these people going to do? You slam and ramming them in a truck, with a truck. You think it's going to, oh, you got me. One of the guys got into a shootout. They not, they not giving a fuck about no truck. They will burn you down, man. Right? But that's a hell of a that's a hell of a point I was going to get into. Like, like, why is it that he didn't check for anybody? Like, really check for stuff. But when, when things would like I can understand a purse snatching. Like, you see the people. There's no no weapons there, so you go to apprehend the person that 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 um, you know, took your stuff. But it's hammers. It's, it's pistols. When I say hammers, that's a New York slang. I mean, it's guns. It's guns there, right? These people pulled out guns. They, it, they, they everybody know you going live because you know the world knows about them, right? So the whole world was watching him live, and then you have these guys that was brazen enough to go and book you right on a live stream. What pisses out? I don't understand why you even go after them. I think it's more than that. I think it wasn't a brazen uh, event of being a super, uh, being brave. I don't think it was a brazen event of being a super. I would simply would think that he cherished the jury more than his peoples. Right? Yeah, you could be mad, but you know, like. <sighs> Let's continue. And I'm, and I said, um, did y'all see them? So they're telling the police that they jumped in a car. So I must've drove by them and didn't know. Or well, they jumped in a car and they must've stayed there and I drove by them. Um, so um, we just drew, drove around the neighborhood, just driving around the neighborhood, just trying to see anything. And we didn't find any, any, anything. So I came back to the church and um, all of the top uh, NYPD officials they were at my church and um so question why does he have to say why did so how does he know all of the top N NYPD officials so it's not, it wasn't a single beat cop there it was number captains and lieutenants there that's it only captains commissioners and lieutenants came 
Not a single beat cop there. All of the top NYPD officials. Like, if you don't get the fuck out of here with this grandioso shit. <laughs> maybe a white shirt came, maybe. But all of the top, all of them. Not one or two, all of them. Then that's when the mayor called me and asked me, was I okay? I said, yeah, I'm all right. And I just was dealing with my church. And ironically, um, um, I told my church, I said, I really want to move forward with the word. But, I, but they was like, Bishop, nah, this is too heinous or whatever. You know, but you know, as preachers, when we have a duty, man, you know, we have a duty and, and whatever the devil tried to do, I didn't, you know, so that's what happened. Let me first say, I'm glad uh, you were okay, that uh, your family was safe and yeah. that it didn't go a different way. Uh, um, you know, it's funny you say that. Yeah. Because the guy just got killed. The one that put the gun in my wife's face. Yeah. Um, now, th that's what I wanted to get you to because I've heard no stories that all three have been... Well, I'm going to leave it to you because everybody thinks that this just went away and don't know that the three culprits have had an encounter with justice. Yeah, and it's and it's and the thing about it is two of them got caught, I think it was two or three months after. And within those three month period, the world destroyed my name. They all said I set the robbery up for an insurance job. Right. The world, Craig, not the city not Brooklyn, the world destroyed his name. Not the city, not the state, not even America, but the world. <laughs> I'm Mr. CK, but this is not a little student show. Show about a little student ticker. Let me give a special shout out. Special shout out to Open Book for the $3 holla. I appreciate you, baby. Special shout out to Gifted one day for the $10 Super Sticker Special. Shout out to Thomas Cedar with the pretty face. He didn't wear that ring. He always wear on IJS on that day. Ava. Special shout out to Howard for the $5 holler. Jamal Bryant had a baby, a young teen girl, and a chair. Hold on. What is going on here on a choir? The mother said she was going to tell a church. And he claimed that he ran away from Maryland. What is going on here? The smut, the smut, the smut. Shout out to you, Harold, for the five dollar holla. Shout out to you, G8, lovely eyes for the five dollar holla. He remembers all of that, but not his sermon. Facts. I appreciate you. Let me also give a special shout out to the individuals who set me out in the super chat. I don't want to say your full name, so I'm going to say Monique, thank you for the $5 holla. Miss J, thank you for the $4 holla. Right? I truly, truly, truly appreciate the, the cash app as well as the super chatters. Definitely appreciate it. But hold on, what is going on here? Jamal Bryant had a baby, a young teen girl in his choir. The mother said she was going to tell a chat, and he claimed they ran away from Maryland. It is some smut with these fellas. Is that true? Is that true? I read some stuff about Brian. Boy, I found some stuff about Brian, too. I found some stuff about Brian, kid. I mean, this is not, not going to be a Brian show. I'm going to keep it on Bishop. I'm going to keep it on Bishop, right? Keep it on Bishop because I don't want to, because y'all know me, I could get long with it and we'd be here all night long. All right? Howard said, yes, indeed. Where's Brendan? Y'all just pulling that, y'all just pulling it all out. My daughter was just in Spain. They never heard of her. So they never heard. So you telling me, so you telling me the world didn't say that he rocked, the world wasn't on top of it? <laughs> <laughs> yo, y'all kill him. Yo, yo Shelly said, uh, was this story in New Jersey? <laughs> yeah, y'all not giving this man no space for real. Y'all not giving him no space. So y'all telling me it, it only made it out of, it only made the papers of Canarsie? That's as far as it went. It didn't, it didn't, it, it, it didn't cross the border of the state. It didn't make it in the best style. It didn't make it in um, Eastern, East New York. It didn't make it in Flatbush. It stayed in Canarsie. Dude, Canarsie even have its own newspaper? 
But I want to give you all a special shout out and thank you for um for the super chats. I think I seen him. Uh, yeah, it was Thomas here that I became a member. I want to give a special shout out to all the super chats as well as cash apps. Again, whenever you guys set me out for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, like whatever it is, I truly, truly appreciate. I cannot say that enough. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it because you know what? This is the thing. When I do these live streams, right, whether it's a subject matter that you really want to talk about or maybe it's a subject matter that you don't want to talk about, I never think anybody's going to show up, right? So when you show up, I appreciate The only thing I ask for is obviously to subscribe and hit the like. You get this algorithm, algorithm, right? I don't even know what the likes is like, but that's here nor there. But when you do the, the fit, when you put the cherry, when you put that cherry, you put that cherry on top when you set a brother out, it lets me know. That you see some true value in whatever it is I'm saying. It's entertainment. Maybe you like the way I look. I don't know. Or they learn a thing or two, even though this is not a little student show. Show about a little student, particular one. Right? So I truly, truly appreciate it. And I see you, Miss Bees. I see you, Miss Bees. I see you, Miss Bees, for the 999. Stay on this police. I intend on it. I intend on it. Truly appreciate that. Truly, truly, truly appreciate it. Let's get back to it, though. All right. They all said that um, that uh, it was an inside job, and they destroyed money, and they said I set the robbery up. When two of the men got caught out of the three, um, people started to get quiet. But nobody's talking about the third guy who just got caught in January. He was on a run for over a year, and um, he was in a hotel, and he came out with a gun. They surrounded him. He came out with a gun shooting at the marshals, federal marshals, and they killed him. So, wow. Yeah, and this was the one, the one that got killed was the one that put the gun in my wife's face. And they confirmed that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's dead. No, they confirmed that this is the guy who oh, yeah. in the church. Yeah, 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 they confirmed it. Yeah, well, within uh, 24 hours, you were viral. Um, so every late night show, every morning radio show, it wasn't even about the safety. What was the lead? was I think that they gave estimates of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, not about uh, hundreds of thousands. Uh, New York is uh, the home of Reverend Ike, but you are not a prosperity preacher. Not at all. Yes. Uh, and so uh, people assume that you got these games through people tithing in the church, uh, giving in the church or handed over their right, right. last will and testament. <laughs> Uh, how were you able to amass independent wealth? Uh, because what people don't know is you've never taken a salary from your church. Ever. Yeah. Never. And this year, I'll be 11 years as a pastor. Wow. Never once took a salary from my church. Yeah. And um, it, it was so hurtful to me by, and, and it didn't even make sense. You know, the tabloids say I have 20 members, but yet the 20 members is taking care of my whole lifestyle. Right. Right. Um, then they said I eight members and they said they, so it's the eight members taking care of my lifestyle. So it, it just didn't measure, but to be, I'm not a prosperity creature, never been. Yeah. Right. Um, and if people do know me, I'm the one who pays the rent for people that need pays mortgages. I done bought, I think two people in my church, maybe more, maybe three. Let me ask a question. Anybody is in this because is anybody in it? I'm gonna drop the link in a minute, right? I want to know is anybody a member of his church? And it's no jab. It's no listen. I'm even Stephen B. I'm and I'm a new true party. I don't want harm to happen or not to happen. So I'm neutral, right? If it's anybody in his that's a member of his church, or at least been associated with his church for a significant period, at least a period of at least, let's say, how long has it been? Three years, right? Who rent has he paid? Because he say that. He said he bought cars, right? According to the, the evidence, he's paid mortgages and car notes. But at the same time, he's paid mortgages and car notes with the very same money that he allegedly, well, he was shown have stole. But notwithstanding what happened with, with the uh, Pauline Anderson thing, like who, before the Pauline, and let's just look at the before the Pauline, Pauline Anderson um, story came out, whose rent has he actually paid? Anybody know this? Has anybody been a person that they, they got his rent paid? I'm curious. Like, I'm truly curious of that. And it's no, listen, I'm not, I don't really don't want to be in your business or whatever. Email me if anything, or DM me. I'm really, really curious as to whether or not this is true or not. 
right? I'm really, really curious to that. Let's let's continue though. Um, brand new cars, yeah, because there's and brand new have, cars, right? This is what I do that people don't know, right. you know. Um, and to be labeled as stealing from the church and stealing from people, and it's like, no, I'm into real estate. I've been doing real estate over 20 years. Wow, right? Yeah, yeah. and you know. I've always had a nice car. Just because I got two Rolls Royces now doesn't mean that I took it from the church. Like I've always, I've had Bentleys, Range Rovers, you, you name it. I have. So he has. So what did he say? He said just because I have two two Rolls Royces doesn't mean I took it from the church. I've had Bentleys, Range Rovers, you name it. Right. Let's go to Exhibit A. Let's look at some stuff. Let's look at some stuff. Let's look at some stuff. So exhibit A, right? What does it say? Book it. So exhibit A says this. Here goes a lawsuit that happened not so long ago, August 4th, 2023. Y'all see this, y'all see the, the docket thing up here. This is this is not make this shit up. This is a suit that happened out in New Jersey, in Bergen County to be exact. The, uh, the petitioners is F H F C Acceptance LLC. Midway HFC, LLC, Midway Fleet Leasing, Midway Leasing against yours truly, Lamar Whitehead and John Doe's 1 through 10 fictitious. Let's look at the allegations. First of all, do you, anybody know what replevin means? Anybody know what that word means? When you, when you, when you see replevin, what comes to your mind? Anybody ever, anybody ever heard of replevin? Replevin is what happens. Replevin is what happens when, let's just say you t you you go to a dealership. It's, it's 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 tax season. You go to a dealership and you see that car, that fly car that the salesman and talk you into getting to because you got all this cash from the taxes. Doesn't mind doesn't doesn't matter that you are uh, working at McDonald's. You got this cash. You didn't you didn't you didn't figure out a way to, to get ten thousand dollars back from Oakland Sand. So you go to the dealership. The, the salesman says, oh, you know what? You could afford this $2,000 payment on that $12 an hour job. You could afford it. I believe in you. And they convince you to get that, that card for the $2,000 or $1,500 or whatever the thousands of dollars it is. Put the down payment. They pocket that. And then you take that loan out, right? Now, of course, you can't afford no $1,000, $2,000, whatever. Can't afford it. So what you do? You don't pay. Now, when you don't pay, what happens? When you don't pay that car note, what happens? The car company, the finance, the financial company is going to write you a letter. They may even call you. They may even say, hey, listen, what's up with that payment? You're going to say, well, what's up with it? I'm waiting for my check. My guy. Another month go by, hey, well, listen, what's up with that payment? Well, what's up? I'm waiting for that check. All right. A third month is going to come up and the people is no longer really going to be talking. It's going to be somebody that's loading and taking away. That loading and take away part is otherwise known as a repossession. The repossession happens when somebody petitions for a replevin. That's taken, that's, that's typically a repo petition. So when you see his name attached to a replevin, there's only one thing that happened. Somebody ain't make their payments. But you know, he said he has um um what does he say? He said he has two 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 Rolls Royces. Plaintiff is the holder of a California motor vehicle lease agreement, duly executed and delivered by the defendants on or about August 9th, 2021, in favor of plaintiff. A true copy of the of the uh, agreement is exhibit one. So with the set contract, defendants granted the plaintiff a security interest in certain collateral, more particularly identified in the contract, included the following 2021 Rolls Royce Cullum. So, you know, in fact, he did have one. It was a lease. He didn't own it, but needless to say he had it. Plaintiff is the first lien holder on the vehicle as set forth in attached exhibit one. Defendant failed to maintain his obligation under the contract and upon information and belief remains in possession of the control of the vehicle. So he paid the shit, but he still got it. Plaintiff is entitled to immediate possession of said vehicle, which plaintiff holds a security interest in by virtue of defendant's default. Plaintiff has performed all conditions precedent to the holder 
of all right title interest of the vehicle, but defendants wrongfully remain in possession of the vehicle, meaning he's not allowing them to take the, the car back. Under the terms of the contract, defendant is obligated to pay the plaintiff its reasonable attorney fees and cause and retaking the, position, the possession of the collateral. The vehicle in question is subject to vast dis, um, depreciation through usage and passage of time. Continued use and operation of the vehicle without payment will eventually cause the plaintiff to be left with the unsecured obligation from the defendants and will cause immediate substantial and irreparable harm to plaintiff. That's his Rolls Royce. And this is what he's saying he still owns. Actually, let's look at something else. Let's look at something else. What else he said he owns? He said he also owns a, 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 a what did he say? He said it was a Range Rover? On about July 5th, 2016, the defendant entered into a retail installment sale contract at Eurosport Auto Sale. Wholesale is to purchase a 2015 Mercedes Benz, bearing ID VIN number, blah, blah, blah. So to the terms and conditions of the contract, defendant promised to pay well, damn near $60,000 plus accrued interest, about seven point two five monthly, and a payment of $1,000. All right. And it failed to make the correct payments of the plaintiff to provide under the terms upon the defendant's failure to pay the installments to become due. Plaintiff pursuant to the terms of agreement exercises options demanded the entire balance together with the cruel old owner agreement. Second count. Plaintiff Affinity Federal Credit Union hereby repeats the each every allegation contained in, in the first count herein. On or about September 25th, 2018, the defendant entered an agreement entered into a retail installment sale contract at Platinum Sales LLC to purchase a 2015 Land Range Rover. Bearing VIN number, blah, blah, blah. The contract was assigned to Affinity Federal Credit Union pursuant to the terms of the conditions. Defendant promised to pay $75,000 plus interest, such a true interest in an annual percentage of 9.24%, monthly $1,200. Long story short, long story short, Yes, he may have these cars, but no, he no longer has them. In fact, he defaulted on them. Something that we all know, but we got to keep it clean. We got to be clear about it. What, what the quiet storm just said, let's be clear. He said he owns all, he got all this stuff, right? Yeah, I got all kinds of color names and Range Rovers, but you hold them hostage, champ. They get repo, champ. I'm just saying, I don't know. I'm just, it's really sad. I got to figure it out, right? In case you, and, and then let me just show you something. In, in the event, you know, people think, where's this thing at? In the event, in the event, I, you know, I ain't finished that. Let me see something. Let me see something. Where is the, all right, hold up. Which one is that? I think that's, that's the construction one. I'm not even going to pull that one up. Right, in the event, I don't even want to put this shit up. I ain't even gonna do it. Y'all get the picture. I was gonna show some up, so I ain't gonna I ain't gonna do it. Y'all get the picture. This motherfucker don't own none of this stuff. All right? Let's go back to it. Yo, TLA, I see you, champ. I had all the cars. That's just me. And that's I just him. Was into jewelry. I like um houses. I like to purchase houses, yeah. cars, and jewelry. That's just what I like to houses, do. cars, and, and jewelry. Um, and clothes. <laughs> and clothes. But um, you know, and for them to place me and stigmatize me as um, um, a, a, a ripper, a, a, a rip, I'm ripping people off, which is just crazy to me. So um, I've never been a, a prosperity preacher, uh, uh, Jamal. I've never been a, a prosperity preacher. And, I've, and, and one of the main things in my ministry when I started, I say, we're going to pass the collection plate, plate for tithes one time. Whatever you're going to do for God, you're going to do for God, and that's it. Right. You know? So I never try to push nor force anyone to give anything. No. You know? However, but this is the narrative that they created. That's true, though? Again, for the people that's, in, people that's in, his, in his ministry, or people that goes to his church, is that true that he only passes the plate around once? Put a one in the chat if you know, right? Put a one in the chat if it's true. Put a two in the chat if it's not true. Put a one in the chat if he passes it around once. Put a two in the chat if he does not. For the individuals that know, if you don't know, it's cool. You know, I'm curious. I'm just curious of this stuff because listen, I've been to my my fair share of, of, of religious houses and that thing ain't passed around once. That thing ain't passed around twice. 
Sometimes that thing is passed around. And it's, 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 it just doesn't stop getting passed around. Yeah, Uncle Vaughn. So he, he so you telling me he passes it around more than once. So you telling me he's lying right here? Is that what you're saying? No one knows. Addison says no one knows. It's only about 20 motherfuckers, though. Like, you know, I, I would imagine it's only 20, according to what people would say, it's only 20, 30 people that show up, right? According to what people are saying. So I would imagine at least you get somebody that, that knows, right? I'm just saying. Of course, he's lying. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I got to give him the benefit of the doubt. I get a brother the benefit of the doubt. Let's continue. Because people have to create a narrative, so therefore they can not want to come to church. You, you are uh, probably the second most uh, media circulated black preacher in America. Oh my God. Uh, with a church that they claim only had 24 people. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're getting coverage like you passed to Lakewood. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to ask, how do you oh get God. the freedom beyond people's opinion? Um, because with all of the glare, all of the discussion, all of the controversy, you didn't come out here in a black suit. Oh, <laughs> you didn't. Right? You're like, hey, if they're going to talk about it, let me give them something to talk about. At what point did you make up in your mind or tell me, did you ever wrestle to say, you know what, Lamar, let me just tone this down. Let me just, the black is too hot. Uh, yeah, yeah, let, let me not be the one who wears the chinchilla to the fight and it throws off everything. At any point where you're like, okay, I'm going I'm to, I'm going to scale this down a little bit. How did you get to the place like, whatever, y'all going to talk about me happy. If I take the L off my name, will I still be Lamar? If I take the W off my name, will I still be Whitehead? Right? I'm yeah. not going to let no one take no letters off my name or out of my name. I'm yeah. who I am. Yeah. Right? And like I tell <laughs> my <laughs> ministry, you stop, you die. Mm. Don't let nothing, nothing or no one change you. Yeah. Okay? And I believe in who God made me. And, um, you know, my, my preachers, my publicists, and all of them say, Bishop, 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 you got to calm down. Just calm down. But when I try to, then I feel like I'm not being me. And I can't be phony. I'm, I'm just this type of person. What right. you see is what you get. Right. So if you're going to hate, you're going to hate regardless. Yeah. Right? Whether I ride in a Rolls Royce or not, broke people are going to still be broke. Yeah. Right? I, if, if I want to get into a Honda, you're still who you are. Right. So I'm not going to um, <laughs> change because of your inconsistencies. Right? We got the same 24 hours in a day. Right. Now, if I had 25 hours, then I'd say, let me tone it down because God gave me an advantage. Right. But the hell that I got to go through to be Lamar White at it, right? I'm going to flatter myself. I'm going to live the, I'm gonna get to live one life. That's right. Not to mention that, you know, I grew up in the most roughest part of Brooklyn there was, and there is, right? And I survived. So just because people don't like what I wear, why? Because it's name brand? Like, I, so, so I, I had to make it make sense. Yeah. Right? And that's why I was telling my team, like, okay, now you have to make it make sense it's to me in order for me to, to, to say, okay, right? Yeah. And y'all not making sense. Fucking I team. know it's hot. I know the heat is hot. But at the end of the day, too much is given, much is required. Yeah. And I, I, I tell them this. The God I serve used me as a vessel. That's right. right. And the vessel that he's using is for revelation. So if I back out of what I'm supposed to space head on, how can God use me to give me, to, to, to give me revelation? Right. And through this experience, I'm able to help so many people. But if I wasn't attacked the way I was, I wouldn't be able to help the people that I'm helping now. Right. Yeah. So many people say, Bishop, how do you have a smile on your face? You know, I really trust Jesus. Wow. Right. I know I don't look like it because of I look like a rapper. People say you're around a lot of rappers and they oh, you're a fraud. You can say whatever you want to say. Yeah. But I really trust Jesus. Like I have a relationship with, with my God. Right. Yeah. And when you have a relationship with God, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, but when you have a relationship with God, right, nobody else's opinion matters, right? So I know who God made me, and I'm going to continue to push. So, you know, you, you expect me to come out in a black suit, I'm going to come out in a Fendi suit. Right. <laughs> that, that, so that's just what it is. And I'm, not, I'm never going to let you control what God has ordained, yeah. and that's my model. So a, a lot of people, Bishop, uh, who have made up uh, their own opinion with, about you without ever knowing you, felt justified when you went to court. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you're just coming out of court. And uh, I want us to talk about that 
a journey for you, that faith walk that you're in presently. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they, the courts in uh, New York, said that an older woman uh, got uh, defrauded mm -hmm. and found you guilty. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to talk about what were the charges and where you are now. So um, <clears throat> as the world know, I was found guilty of five charges. As the world uh, the knows. charge was uh, wire fraud. It was um, defrauding um, Pauline Anderson for $90,000. The second charge was... Polly Anderson is the lady's name. Yes. And this old lady, how old is she? She's, she's only 50, I think, three years old. She's not old <laughs> at all. Right. This, this is all the hype, right? Yeah. This is all the hype. Okay. Uh, an elderly lady. Oh. Let me stop it right there. Remember what I was saying? Who, how many people think this is scripted? Remember how I said how many people think that they this was something that they like, like essentially manufactured, that this interview isn't an interview where he's just asking, you know, open questions. It's not like unfiltered questions, not not um, vetted questions. Pay attention to how this thing unfolded. Pay attention to how this dialogue unfolds. Right. That that. um talking point that Pauline Anderson isn't an old woman is a talking point that specifically Bishop promotes, right? Now, you know, he always say, well, you know, you shouldn't rob nobody, but he makes sure he's clear to signify, or at least dignify the idea that notwithstanding what he was prosecuted and convicted of, that this woman was an old, right? Now, listen, it's 50, if it's, well, first of all, she's not 53. She's like 55, right? But not need, needless to say, 55, in your 50s, you're not flipping up, flipping up the street. In your 50s, you're not doing shit that you once could do when you're 20s, 30s, even 40s, right? You're a whole different person. Your, your body change, your mind change, everything changes. You're no longer that same fox that you once was. Now, you may mentally kind of feel it, but them knees don't, don't lie to you, right? That arthritis ain't lying to you, right? For the men that's of 40 and above, that, that um, colonoscopy isn't lying to you, right? When you meet a certain age, yeah, I think she's like 50. I think she's in her late 50s. But either way, that, that talking point of, oh, she's not old, is a bishop talking point. So the fact that this guy is signaling and make certain to pivot to that specific point lets me know that this is scripted but 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 let's just let's just watch let's just continue on and pay attention to the little nuggets and that's the stuff that that's what makes this whole thing disingenuous of all the things the only reason one of the reasons what made me actually even talk about this outside of the fact that you guys forced me out the house is the fact of how disingenuous this is because when you watch it when you watch this interview you're going to see like uh uh repeated intent effect to push particular narratives that Bishop has been resoundingly and repeatedly and continually been pushing. That's one. Another one, I'm not even going to say the other one, but you're going to, you're going to see, he's going to continue to keep pushing these kind of like narratives as opposed to just asking them specific questions and looking for specific answers, holding them to the question until he answers it, like the prosecutor or like you know some of the other interviewers, instead of just letting him ramble on or, or allowing him to just push this particularized narrative. And I think that's extremely poor when it comes to when you interviewing somebody because you deprive a person of the ability, deprive the audience of the ability to, to see things for what they are as opposed to what you're trying to make it believe. It's a manipulation tactic that I think is poor. Let's continue, though. Oh, now you're not supposed to take from nobody, but they put they yeah. put extra to it to make me look like just this bad pastor, right? Because right? you have to understand, Jamal, the reason why people don't like Bishop is for two reasons, right? He set up the robbery for, at his church and he robbed the old lady. Yeah. When you clear up those two narratives, now what? Yeah. Right? So we cleared up the robbery already. I didn't set it up. Now let's clear this up, yeah. right? So um, the second charge is... Uh, by the way, how... Put a one in the chat, chat if you could. Put a one in the chat if you think he's gonna answer what happened to that money. Put a two in the chat if you think he's just gonna talk around this. Put a one in the chat, because he said he's talking, he's talking about Pauline Anderson right now. 
So put a one in the chat if you think he's going to stick with this. What happened with Paulie? Because what did you just say? He said, okay, well, it's two things they don't like about Bishop. They think he was behind a robbery and think he robbed this old lady, right? So he just spoke about the robbery in specific detail and, 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 and talked about how, you know, the world knows him and how all the top NYPD officers came, all of this stuff. He, he, he spent a, about a good 20 minutes talking about this goddamn robbery, right? So now it's about the other thing that he, according to him, nobody likes him for, which is the, 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 the fraud of this old woman, or at least according to him, this young woman, right? Whatever. Let's just see if he actually is going to talk about that part. Not nothing else, not Brandon Belmonte, not the, the, the fake statements, but specifically Pauline Anderson. And, and, you know, a little, little bit of Rasheed, but specifically Pauline Anderson. Let's just see if he sticks with that specific question. Let's continue. Um, attempt wire fraud of Brandon Belmonte. They never even said what was attempted to be taken at all, right? They said it was a building and they said it was money. Attempt extortion was a third charge where they said that I was extorting Brandon Belmonte, yeah. right, for $5,000. Now, Brandon related to this old lady how? No, no, Rasheed Anderson was his, her son. Oh, but Brandon Belmonte was a federal informant that played as if he's a victim because they wanted to take down the mayor, Eric Adams. So we gonna get into that. Yeah. Um, and then the fourth charge was lying to an FBI agent. Okay, we are gonna talk about that. And the fifth charge was wire fraud um, for an allegedly trying to take two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, all right. So, just to be clear, he laid out his charges. He has five charges. As I said in the very beginning, the first count is wire fraud against Pauline Anderson, right? Which is the the real estate scheme that he he got her to agree to in exchange for ninety thousand dollars. The second charge is the attempted extortion of Brenda Belmonte, which was the five thousand dollar you know dispute that he threatened with physical harm to take the money, which in fact he wound up getting. Third count was attempted wire fraud against Brandon Belmonte in exchange to some real estate scheme that he supposedly wanted to levy his relationship with Mayor Eric Adams. The fourth charge was the 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 fail the, um the the false statements to the feds, right? And the fifth charge is the another wire fraud count against the bank for the two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan. So he laid out his indictment, his superseded indictment. In fact, he laid it out. Now, even though he said he doesn't know what the hell the wire fraud is. With the bank, I mean, with Brandon Belmonte, let's actually go to the goddamn indictment so we can all be clear as to what the indictment says, right? So the indictment as it pertains to Brandon Belmonte is, okay, in or about April or May of 2022, Lamar Whitehead, the defendant, attempted to convince a businessman, i.e. Brandon Belmonte, to lend Whitehead approximately half a million dollars to, and give him a stake in certain real estate transactions. Whitehead told victim that in exchange for this money and interest in real estate transactions, Whitehead will obtain favorable actions by the New York City government for victim two that would enrich both Whitehead and victim. So that's what the argument was. That's what the, in exchange for his position, his relationship with the New York City Mayor Eric Adams, I want you to give me a half a million dollars and a stake in whatever it is, the real estate um, properties that you own. That's what the scheme was. So he laid out all five counts. Now let's go, remember, what was the question? Is he going specifically to talk about Pauline Anderson and what happened to the money? That's what I want to know. But before we, let me give a special shout out to the cash appers. Let me give a special shout out to the YouTubers. I want to give a special shout out to Alice, blessed child of God. Thanks for your commentary. You are really much appreciated. Truly, truly appreciate it. Truly, truly appreciate it. Give a special shout out to Shelly for the not one for the one dot one ninety nine holler, bro. He got Bendy on the stand. <laughs> needs he needs to stop. Bendy? Oh, that's hard. That's hard. Yo, you're not giving this brother. You're not giving a good bishop no space. I also want to give a special <laughs> shout out to Tristy for the five dollar holler. I truly, truly appreciate you. Five holler, five dollar cash out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right? I'm Mr. CKB, and this is not a law student show. This is a show about a law student. Take a moment. We're for more than a decade. We're for more than a decade. I've been in a statement called illegal business. Listen, I don't know what the likes are. It's 406 people at this very moment. I don't know what the likes are. Whatever the likes are, let me get it. Can I get it up to 300? I don't know if it's 400. I don't know if it's 200. But can I get it up to 300? That's all I ask. I, mean, I don't ask for anything but the likes, right? Can I get it to 300? If you don't, if you don't mind, right? 
That's all I'm asking for. Right? That's all I'm asking for is to get those likes to 300. Right? Let me see what the, let me see if, if, if it buzz just a bit. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Go to it. That's 178. Yeah, I need, I need to get the mics up. If you don't mind, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right, so let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Let's see if he talks about Pauline. So let's go to the, the first count. Um, Pauline Anderson. Okay, now, Pauline Anderson. Before I can get to the first count, I got to tell you guys the entire picture. Oh, my God. So Mayor Eric Adams is the second black mayor of New York City. That's right. And everybody knows that... Me and Eric are very close. Yeah. I am one of the top three closest to him, period. Right? Period. Um, and we have gained a relationship. He's been my mentor for a long time. Right. And um, he's poured into me. We've never did any business. Never. Right? And um, so my wife car, my wife car had got um, into an accident. So this gentleman, Brandon Belmonte, he owns oh my a, God. Um, a body shop. He was inter introduced introduced to me through another friend Thank of mine. Thank you, fellas. I appreciate it. He you. was like, "Yeah, I rent cars and I got a body shop. If you need me, let me know." So my wife car, well, my sister in law car got uh, into an accident first. He yeah. fixed that car. So I said he did a good job with that. Let me let him do my wife's car. So my wife got into an accident. Somebody hit her car, and I said, "Brother, I need you to fix it." I said, "All right, cool. I'm gonna send you a rental car." I said, "No problem." So he sends me a rental car. Comes pick the car up, my wife's car, but the rental car he gave me was broken. Oh Lord. Now, my, my, said, oh, my, my daughter was just born, <laughs> right? My, my baby. And um, she was born in November, so she's three months old, screaming, yelling. What the fuck and, is he? What um, does that have to do with Pauline? Um, so my wife, um, I told him that my wife's car was into an accident. He said that, um, all right, cool. I'll give you a rental car. You don't have to worry about anything. And I'll come pick your wife's car. So he comes pick the, my wife's car up. And then um, he um, sends a rental car. Now, the rental car doesn't work. It was an Escalate um, 2000, like 19, 2020 Escalate, and it doesn't work. My wife calls me and says, it's shaking, it's shaking. I said, just get out the car. I'll, I'll take care. So I called me and said, Let's let me stop it right here. What the fuck does that have to do with Pauline Anderson? What does any of that have to do with the first count? He laid the counts out. What does that have to do with the first count? Why is he talking about Brandon Belmonte? Why is he talking about his wife's car? You know what? I'm gonna give. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be a little bit more patient. I'm gonna be a little patient. Let's just see where it goes. I'm, I'm gonna be a little patient. Let's see where it goes. Okay, so whatever you have to pay for another rental car, I'll give it back. No problem. Um, I did not know that he was a federal informant. Right oh, now, I know this. Right, and now it's starting to make it made sense. So he never was fixing the car. Never was fixing the car. And I will go down there and I said, yo, the car is still the same. Why? So we will be arguing yeah. about the car, right? So he will call me knowing that he just already agitated me mm. and he's recording me and I didn't even know he was recording me. Mm. So he's recording me in rage and in anger. And this is how he's saying that I extorted him because I told him I need my $5,000 so I can do what I need to do. You're not going to get away with my $5,000. So now we're in the months of March and he's like, oh, Mary, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you the money. Listen, I got some property that I want to sell you. Uh, I know you, I'll be watching your videos and I want to, I want you to, um, I, I, want, I want properties in the Bronx. So I said, all right, cool. You know, um, let me know because what I wanted to do, I wanted to buy more apartment complexes so I can house homeless and shelter people there. Yeah. So I didn't know that he was lying to me about all of this, but yet the FBI was already involved with him. And now they have created this whole narrative that I'm trying to get property from him in exchange for favors with the mayor. But I'm just telling you information that I know now, but then I didn't know. So he's just telling me about properties that he owned that I want to purchase. So now he's in count three. He's in count three now. So he went from Pauline Anderson, did, he just jumped past Pauline Anderson to talk about the extortion. Now he's in count three. He's talking about the properties, which was the wire fraud. I just want you to, you know, man, I'm, getting, I'm, 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 I'm trying to bear with him. I'm trying to get to the first count. So I need to know what happened with that money. I need to know what happened with that bread, right? Why is he talking about Brandon and why is he talking about these raggedy ass Bronx properties? Not to say anything about Bronx. Bronx is a beautiful place, depending upon where you at in the Bronx. <laughs> but he's talking about properties. What's up with what's up with what, has it, what does it have to do with Pauline? I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just curious. But I'm, I'm gonna give him some patience. I'm gonna, I'm you know, 
I'm gonna give him some patience. Sometimes it takes a while, right? Yes, correct, right? He didn't own the properties. He never sent me any of the properties. So now I'm saying to him, brother, you are playing games with me. I don't need nothing from you. Finish my wife's car, give me my $5,000 and go your way, right? So he began to argue with me, argue with me. I didn't know I'm being recorded. Yeah. So now he's making it seem like I'm violent. But no, I'm arguing with you about my wife's car. I'm arguing with you about giving me what I need. So then he says, listen, I'm going to bring the money to you or whatever. I'm going to bring the money to you and we're going to take care of it. So he comes to my house. He bring the $5,000 and he says, listen. So he, he told me how um, he, his, him and his father has a hard money um, company yeah. and I own uh, a 40 unit co um, complex and I was doing renovations in, like, your... in Connecticut. Okay. So, and by the way, um, I own, as an African-American, I own the largest oh piece God. of property in Hartford, Connecticut. Wow. As African-American, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And this is another reason why I'm being attacked, right? And they know this, yeah. right? So, um, so now I'm renovating out there. He's like, listen, um, since we're going to do business, because he's trying to clean everything up now, since we're going to do business, um, uh, I want you to um, let us lend you the money or whatever. I said, all right, you can lend me the money, no problem. He started to renege on that. I'm saying, listen, send me your, send me your attorney's information. Here's my attorney's information. He's right. reneging on that. Wow. Now that I do know right. what's going on, they're recording me. And the FBI and him are working together. So now he goes to the FBI or in April, but he was already with them. Yeah. He goes to the FBI in April and says, this man is trying to extort me, right? And he said, I put him on the phone with the mayor of New York and the mayor of New York or FaceTime told him to do business with me and we're gonna do things under the table for him. So he tells that, and this is all in, and I want, I want the world to understand this. This world. is all documented. And these are in statements called 302s, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is not privy to the world, right? So he says that I put him on FaceTime with the mayor of New York, Eric Adams, and Eric Adams told him to do business with me and we're gonna do big things and we're gonna do things under the table and all this other stuff he said. So then he says that I told him that I was going to act like we're purchasing the properties and um, I was going to get fraudulent federal um, um, grants for homeless wow. and shelters, right? Wow. But actually, I'm going to flip the building as free market rent. So all this is in my documentation, and these are all the lies that him and the FBI are teaming up to do. So now the FBI, I go for a walk one day, and I'm going to get to Pauline so y'all can understand uh, uh, yes, exactly yeah. why. So, I need to uh, how this whole thing came about. Mine is so um, starting to freeze up. In May, I went viral because they started to call me the bling bling bishop yeah. when I turned the young man in. Because yeah. when I turned them in, I pulled up to the preset in my Rolls Royce oh. and I had a Fendi jacket on. So they called me the bling bling bishop. They didn't care anything about um, the man who died or the man that, that killed him. It was all about the bling bling bishop. Right. So now, a week later after that, the FBI was in front of my house. I go out for my morning walk. Yeah. You jump out the car. Now, um, I know I'm working in, in, in a little backwards, but here is count four. And y'all going to understand. Oh, my God. To the FBI. Count four? Yeah. So when they jump out the car on me, they said, you're not under arrest, but um, we have a warrant for your phone. Right? So I put my hands up. They snatched the phone out of my hand. I said, what is this about? So what is this about? He said, um, we have a warrant for your phone. If you want to talk, we can talk. I said, and they said, we got a warrant for your church. So people don't know this. Wow. Yeah. We got a warrant for your church. I said, for my church? So I said, can we get out of the streets? Because I don't want my neighbors to see all of this. And let's go inside of my home. And I got the video too, right? Um, so we go inside of my house. And I said, what are you talking about? You got a warrant for my church. And why are y'all taking my phone? And he said, well, we heard his guns in your church. Wow. Right. Now, I want y'all to, re to really put your thinking caps on, okay? This is June 7th. Excuse me, June 8th. The FBI comes to my oh house my and says, we heard you got guns in your church. Mm. Okay. I said, guns in my church? I said, you kidding me? So they said, listen, we don't want you. We want you. We want the mayor of New York. We want you to help us get the mayor of New York. I said, what? I now said, let me pause you right here for one minute here. I'm a law school dropout. Right. All right, let me ask you a question. So pastor is stopping him right there. He said, let me pause him. Now, now listen, the question is, what's up with this old woman or young woman? What's, quite, what's up with count one, right? He started talking about it just a bit. Then he started talking about Brandon Belmonte. Then he started talking about the goddamn Bronx houses and he wanted to create this homeless center. Then he's now going on and talking about the feds. The pastor stops him. He said, let me pause you for a minute. Pause you for a minute. I went to law school. Put a one in the chat if you think 
he's going to bring them back to the first question. Put a one in the chat if you think the pastor is going to bring him back to the first question. Put a two in the chat if you think the pastor is going to pander him so he can continue on mundaring, I mean, continue on going on with this, this narrative to not answer the goddamn question. One in the chat if he's going to ask him. Two in the chat is if he's going to just, just pander him to continue on with this, non, this, this nonsensical direction. God damn y'all, I swear y'all don't give him no space. Y'all don't have no faith in the bishop. How y'all don't have faith in the good bishop? Your favorite bishop. Y'all not gonna tell me that's not your favorite bishop. I'm listen, I'm, I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a one. I'm gonna say, you know what? Let me put a one in the chat. I'm gonna put a one in the chat because I believe, I believe. The pastor is going to bring him back. So I'll put him one in the chat. I'm going to, listen, I'm going to be a part of the scheme. I'm going to be a part of this. Put him one in the chat. Ooh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see something. Let me, where's the likes like? I, I, I'm here. I'm see, Hold on. It's 420. I didn't even realize there's 420 people in. What is the likes like? Can I just see what the likes are? Let me see. Let me refresh this. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe. Whatever the likes. Okay, 209. Y'all getting there. Let me get to let me get it to 250. I just need to get to 250. That's all. That's all I'm asking. I wanted 300. Optimistically, I would like 300. But I put a one in the chat because I think the pastor is going to bring him back. I think the pastor is going to bring him back into what happened with Pauline Anderson. So I put a one in the chat. I got faith in the pastor. Let's see what the let's see what the pastor does. I've never taken a bar. Okay. I've never graduated from law school. Okay. But I want to read you your rights because you're making some amazing claims against the FBI. Oh, right? my God. I want to pause for just one right. moment. Right? Oh, and just God. remind you the ops is watching. I know. I was like, you're standing by this witness yes. that they are committed to bringing down this black male of New York. 1,000%. And that you are the casualty of your loyalty to friendship. 1,000%. Okay. 1,000%. Okay. So when we're on the side of my house, they're saying, um, you know, we want you to help us with the mayor. You know, I said, what? I said, listen, call my lawyer, right? So now um, what I'm trying to do is, so I, I said, let me get some numbers out of my phone so I can get somebody to open the church because I was renting the building. Right. And I said, I don't want y'all to kick the door down because it was a glass door. So I said, um, so they give me the phone numbers. They give me the phone numbers. So I leave, I go back in and I tell my wife, yo, look, these FBI out there. And I told her what was going on. Yeah. So I try to call the owners of the building. They wasn't picking up because this is like six in the morning. So everybody sleep. Um, I'm calling, calling, couldn't get them. So I go back out and say, listen, I'm trying to get them. Just give me a minute. Make a long story short. Um, I finally get them on the phone. I come back out and I said, look, I said, look, um, she's going to open the door for you. Here's her number. Y'all can go. So they said, listen, oh, okay. so this is what they said to me. They said, do you have another cell phone that we can call you on? Cause they just took this phone. Right. So they said, do you have another cell phone that we can call you on? Let's just talk. We want to talk to you. I said, no, call my lawyer, right? They charged me for lying because they said that they asked me, yes. do I have another phone? You didn't ask me that. You wanted me to talk against the mayor. And you said, come on, do you have another cell phone that we can call you on? No, you can't call me on another cell phone. You have my lawyer right. and that's it. You don't need to call me. So for, for the count four, lying to a federal agent, it was because of that. Wow. That's it. Wow. That's it. Right? The, now, why in your mind and processing this, would they expend all of this energy on you and not use all of that energy on bring down Mayor Adams when the FBI has a history of pulling down black leaders? I think that's the only out of listen. I've watched this. I've, I'm going to be honest with you. I've watched this, this, um, this interview already. Right. I think out of all of the questions to ask, considering they just refuse to talk about Pauline Edison at this point. That is a question to ask. Why the fuck you? Right? Why not somebody that works directly with him? Right? Didn't they have this thing with this young 25-year-old um, staff advisor ch kid that he had running his campaign? Right? Why not use her? Why not use somebody that actually works inside of City Hall? Why you? Right? Because even if they use you against, against the... um. The mayor, and let's just say you was with it all the way to tell. You will be the worst witness because you cre your credibility is shot at this point. 
And we're not even talking about your criminal past. You know, shit happens, right? You've, you've changed your life. You're doing something with your life. But you have so much stuff going on with you that no reasonable jury will believe it. It's so incredible what was going on with you from all of these different accusations, from all of these different civil actions, and all of that stuff will be permissible to bring in into court if you were to testify against somebody. Mama, this isn't um, a thing against a defendant. If you testify, you will be a witness in a United States Supreme Court, the United States government will be going against the mayor. So let's just say if they use you as a sting operation, right? And you somehow, some way are able to get the mayor to make certain admissions that rise to the level of some sort of, you know, political crime, right? Some sort of, some type of crime and then arrest them and indict them. And they use you as a star witness. Why are you? Out of all the people, why are you? Right? Why not the commissioner? Why not all, all of the other politi politicians that, that are currently facing indictment or are is undergoing indictment? Why are you? I think that is the most pre that is the most precise question outside of asking a question about Pauline Anderson. Let's see what he says about that. So the thing about it is this, right? Um, what I've learned now okay. is that um, these FBI guys, mm. they don't even want the truth. Oh, right? They God. don't even want the truth. Yes. If they can get somebody <laughs> close to you that will lie, they got you. Yeah. Right? And I found that out to be found guilty of things that I did not commit. I'm 1,000% innocent. Like 1,000%. 1,000%. You and Murray, Diane, then you found the an FBI agent when in the 302. You know, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. He's just he's just parked, he just sparked a uh, 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 a thought in my mind. If he was on Murray and they asked him, is that your baby? And he says, I'm 1000 percent positive I didn't touch that woman. Put a one in the chat if you believe him. If somebody came out with a baby, remember he's a married man. I'm not saying he's doing anything with these ladies, but let's just say somebody came out with a baby saying it is his and it was on Murray. And you know how Murray always asks the question, how sure are you? And the later girl said, I'm a thousand percent sure of Murray, this is his. Right? If he said, I'm one thousand percent sure I didn't touch that woman, that's not my baby, put a one in the chat if you believe him. Put a two in the chat if y'all, you give him a benefit of the doubt. One in the chat. But two, I'm just curious because he's a thousand percent innocent. Obviously, right? It's obviously innocent. I'm just curious. Let's continue while you hit the chat. I mean, it says that he asked me, do I have another cell phone that I haven't caught? Yeah. It says it there. Right. And I still get found guilty of it. Mm. Hmm. Still get fucked. And the thing about it, and let me say this. This motherfucker drinking water happened. and shit. So this FBI agent, right? The lead uh, agent, right? He didn't testify. Actually, why? Why? Because he lied on six search warrants to the judge. Oh, wow. Yeah. And hey, look at look at look at the six wow. search warrants to the judge. So when you look at the search warrant, right? There's something called an application affidavit for search warrant. Yeah. So in order for you to get the search warrant, you have to give the judge a sworn statement saying, if we take this phone, we are going to get information out of this phone pertaining God, to whatever we're saying. We're have to do Pauline, man. So in the first two search warrants, it was all about the mayor, Eric Adams. Um, the whole search warrant wow. was about Eric Adams. Yeah. And this fucking bride talking about, this, wow. You don't have the search warrant. Yeah. Right? So all you can do is speculate. So all of the reasons for the search warrant was about Eric Adams, but they called him a New York state uh, government official. That's what they called him. Yeah. So the reason why they got the search warrant was because the FBI said they recorded, they video recorded me on the phone with Brandon Belmonte saying, I just got, I, um, I just got the phone with the mayor, um, the mayor, uh, Eric Adams and the meeting for us. I mean, the meeting is already set up. So the FBI said they recorded this showing that I was about to do something illegal with the mayor and Miranda Belmonte. Crazy. Right? Yes. So, so now, a week, no, three days before trial, the, the, F, um, the, the, the federal prosecutors turn over evidence. They turn over the transcripts of all the, of the call. No way. Right? So on the transcripts, 
it got to, it has to say all of the people that participated. That's right. So I told my lawyers, I said, where's the FBI agent? He's the one that said that he recorded it and he put it in the search warrant. Right. They called a, the federal prosecutor said, um, where is the FBI agent on these transcripts? Did he lie? And he was like, no, he, no, he didn't lie. We're going to get right back to you. And he said, yes, that wasn't him. Wow. Right. So then they said, do anybody well, knows, I mean, do anybody knows what the fuck he's talking about? Like he's sitting here talking and in my mind, I just kind of like, I have no clue what he's talking about. I have no clue what the point is. I have no clue as to what he's trying to get to. I could, I guess I could, you know, you could glean an idea. Maybe he's saying, oh, well, you know, they ascertain the, the, the FBI agents may have lied on the search warrant application to give them the ability to search his home and his person. Okay. They didn't find, like, okay. Okay. What's the point of all of this? Like, what is the point? I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, first, I'm trying to figure out what is up, what happened with Pauline Anderson and that money. That's what I want to know. I want to know that first. But even, even as he continues on with this fucking past and talking about wow every other minute, what is the point? Like, where is he going with this? Like, what is the actual point? I just don't get it. Maybe, maybe I'm sorry. Maybe I, maybe I have a public school education, so maybe I don't. You know. Let's continue, though. It was an error. By error, you have six search warrants to six different federal judges. Oh my God. And you're going to see, and it says the same thing in all of the search warrants. Not to mention, they now turn over, okay. right, the chain of custody mm -hmm. of this recording. Yeah. Right? This recording, mm. and you guys don't know this. Oh, we don't know this. This recording that he used to get this um, search warrant. Yeah. They said it was done on May 5th, mm. right? Yeah. 2022, mm -hmm. right? We get the, the chain of custody paperwork. It was recorded on May 5th. So they say by and only by the informant, Brandon Belmonte. Yeah. He used two phones. But more, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It gets better. Oh, it's going to get better. Okay. Let's get better. They don't get this video until 19 days later. Uh -huh. Wow. So they don't know if his document if it's been altered, altered. Look, 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 look. 19 days later. Look, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Brian forgot, but forgot what he was supposed to say. Look, 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 he had to correct him. Pastor Brian, and this is this is so nasty. Let, 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 watch this, watch this. He forgot what he was supposed to say. Listen to what Pastor say. We get the, the chain of custody paperwork. It was recorded on May 5th. So they say by and only by the informant, Brandon Belmonte. Yeah. He used two phones. But more, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It gets better. Okay, see, better. Watch the pastor. They Watch the pastor forget what he's supposed to say. It's fucking sleeping. Until 19 days later. Wow. So they don't know if his document is his altered, altered, <laughs> nothing. 19 <laughs> days later. He forgot so what he was supposed he didn't to have say. This information. So this is why now we're putting for a new trial. We're putting to set aside the verdict. And okay, so what's that um, with Pauline? Though? So many calamities, but let me just go a little first. So I can get into Pauline. Anderson. Okay, okay, okay. So now, so furthest we can get to Pauline. Okay, they come, they take my phones. Okay. And then they come back in June, I believe, 27th. They come in my house. They threaten me to that they was going to slam my face on the floor. Wow. If I didn't give them my cell phone. Wow. Right. So let I me stop right there. Just so you could be clear. Two specific search warrants on his home occurred. Well, actually, it was, you know, his home occurred. The first time when they first came, they they searched his person. They searched the church because they was looking for the phones. So when they asked them whether or not he had another phone or whether or not he had another phone on which they can call him, he said no, hence the false statement. The second time he came, and he testified to this, the second time he came, and on that second time he came, according to his own testimony, they came in a wee hours of the night. When they came in the wee hours of the night, they came and said, we, want, we need all of electronic, we need all of the devices, we need all the phones. And it was that time that they was able to get his second phone. Nowhere in that testimony or nowhere in any of the proofs that was submitted from his lawyers or himself does he ever make the allegation that the feds put their hands on him. When he first started talking about this whole interaction with the feds, what was the first thing that he said? He said 
that he has the whole thing recorded because it happened in front of his house. In fact, even if you look at his house, let's take a let's take a glimpse at, at his house. When you look at his house, right? Let's go to his house. Let's look at his house right quick. When you look at his house, let me show you something. Y'all see that? Y'all see this right here? That's a big ass camera right there. Right. And I would and I would imagine his house is wired up. I would imagine he has cameras throughout the entire facility. Right. Now, why is that important? Because if he says that these people came in his house in the wee hours of the night. And he put his hands on him. As vocal as he's been about Brandon Belmonte, about how the feds is trying to set him up. That footage would have certainly been released. As vocal as he's been about the feds specifically, that footage would have been leaked at the very least. Remember, the trial is over, right? When we look at the motions of lemony, nowhere in the motions of lemony or the motions to preclude, did anybody say we cannot add that interaction with him in the federal offices. First off, why was nobody sued for that? Because if you're telling me the feds came in and beat you up, that's an excessive, fo- that's a 1983 claim. Even if you're guilty, the police cannot accept, um, perpetrate excessive force against you. You They, they can have the, you know, within, within reason, obviously, if you have a weapon in your hand, then they can, you know, pursue excessive force. But in this circumstance, where he's just in his house in the wee hours of the night and they come to execute a search warrant and they put hands on him and there's no footage of that anywhere, there's no statements of that anywhere, and I'm sure his wife and whomever else that was home at his house would have witnessed that, that never come out to this moment. I'm just saying, right? You ask me, if you ask me. This is a new phone or the one they took prior? No, this is my other phone. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, right. Because what they did was um, they saw that, um, well, let me just stay on this. So they get my phone and they say, open the phone. I said, I'm not opening the phone. Yeah. They said, well, we're going to slam you on the floor and we're going to put your face there Ooh. or we're going to bend your fingers to make you open the phone. Now, let me say something. That happens all the time. I want you to be clear with that. That happens all the time. That's happened with clients that we've represented. That's happened with people that I know personally. I've seen it done. And one of the things I've said in the past, even on this stream, I said, one of the things you don't do if you get arrested is ask to make a phone call from your phone. In fact, one of my clients, his former clients, He was accused of shipping some stuff from one part of the country to the next. And it really didn't have any real evidence against him. They had somebody that said, yeah, maybe he's a part of it. Right. So when they went down to apprehend him, he said, hey, can I make a phone call? He said, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Said, who you want to call? He said, I want to call my mother and tell her that I was I'm being arrested. He said, sure. You have a number? He said, no, I need to go on my phone. Yeah, sure. Here, take your phone. And he used the phone. I think whether or not I think he had this, this face recognition or maybe a thumb thing. I don't know. But he actually opened the phone. And once he opened the phone, he allowed the feds to access his phone. Now, he didn't allow the feds from the extent of, yeah, you can search my phone because you need a separate interstate search warrant for that. Right. However, the feds went in his phone and they was able to get an exceptional amount of evidence, particularly tying this kid to the things that was being moved across the country. And I always tell people, if you were to get caught up in anything, it doesn't matter what it is, you get caught up in something, you better remember at least one or two numbers. The local legal aid society, which is not not necessarily necessary because the court is going to appoint you an attorney. But you better remember somebody in your life's number by heart. Somebody, whether it's your mother, your brother, some chick up the street, whoever, don't get in your phone. Don't access that phone. Don't think about that phone. Now, if the cops want to get it, they're going to force it out of you. However, if they force it out of you, that's an easable, easily motion to suppress. Here, this guy said 
that upon executing that search warrant, they went in his house. When he got his phone, he said the feds threatened to slam his face on the ground, bend his fingers up to open up the phone if he doesn't do it voluntarily. And you mean to tell me that didn't come out in any motions to suppress? That didn't come out to any any testimony of that came out? His lawyer didn't ask him that specifically. So tell me what happened during the time in which the search warrant was executed. In fact, let's go into what his lawyer actually asked him as it pertains to that. Let me see if I can find that part. I, I wasn't actually even thinking about bringing that up. Let, actually, let's go down. Let's see. Let's see. Contract attorneys. Let's see. Let me, let me look at this damn transcript to see. Okay. Move on to the next thing. The FBI at your house. Right? Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Because we're going to go on what his lawyer asked him. Forget what the prosecutor asked. The prosecutor isn't going to put out anything that's condemning. Okay. Did you go to the house? Let me look at something right quick. To your knowledge. Okay. It's the loans or anything. All right. Let's go back to it. No, that's the loans. Let's go back. 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 Okay. Let's look at what his certain. Let's look at what his what his own trial testimony says. But they didn't have a warrant for your house. No, they did not have a warrant for my house. So you ask me what happened after. I asked them, "Can I get numbers out of my phone?" This is the first time. Let's go back. Let's go. Let's continue. Okay. Okay. Uh, who did you call? Okay, I called Stacy, the owner. Okay, you talked about that. Objection, objection, lady. Okay, so when you were standing outside, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you're back in the house, blah, blah, blah. What, what part resolved? Yeah, yeah. Okay, did you call left? Blah, blah, blah. Text Eric 911. Question, if you called him, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the property, businesses, rental hall. Okay, Bible, documents. Load it. Israel Vasquez, my main guy, working for years, filing documents. Oh, they skip it. I, I, I know they said something, and let me know. I don't want to belabor that with that, but nowhere in this testimony did he make mention of any kind of forcing him to do anything. Nowhere. So that whole nonsense of him, or at least that whole claim of that they was going to force him to get the fuck out of here. Now, I'm not saying the feds don't do that. They play dirty. Like, you don't know what I know. You didn't see the shit that I said. They play dirty. Now, all the time, sometimes they play dirty. If that would have happened, he would have talked about it. He would have screamed about it, and that video would have been leaked. I can guarantee you that. Let's go back to the interview. Wow. And he, goes, he told me, I said, the, the search and this warrant. this motherfucker with this wow he shit. He says, um, um, yesterday, I said, where the search warrant at? And he says, we don't have it. Okay. So anyway. Um, my wife had my attorney on. She said, just open the phone. Don't worry about it. I open the phone. They leave. Now, remember this. Yeah. Right. On June 8th, they said that it was guns in my church. Right. Three weeks later, my church was robbed. I just want y'all to put all this together. Three weeks later, my church. Was so robbed. I guess he's now insinuating the feds had a role in a robbery of his church. Is that what he's saying? Is this guy really saying that? Is this guy really saying that they came to execute a search warrant saying that it was pistols in his church, right? And this is because of something that he said online, right? This is what he said. This is what he said. He, this is what he said. So because of something that he said, the cops come and execute a search warrant on his church. In fact, they said, if you don't get them to open the door, we're going to kick the door in. He said, I know don't do that because it's glass. I'm, I'm leasing a little, I'm leasing a spot for a specific time period. I don't want you to do that. Let me call the owners. I'll let you guys. They're going to let you in and you can do whatever you want to do. So according to his, this is his testimony. This is what he testified to. Right. Then he says, after they searched the, searched the place two days later, maybe two weeks later, his place get robbed, insinuating that perhaps they searched the place to clean it out, to make sure there's no weapons in there. To then allow the robbers to rob him? Or is he saying maybe the robbers set it up? Maybe the robbers reported that he had pistols in there. Maybe the robbers was the reason in which the, the, the feds was able to get the search warrant to search his church. 
Either way, this is complete nonsense. But let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. But put that out in the air. Okay? Yeah. So, and y'all going to see more about that. Okay. But anyway, You're going to see more about that. Um, now, my church was robbed July 24th. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Brandon Belmonte has been working with them since the beginning of January, excuse me, uh, January 2022. Right? Uh, what's yeah. up with Pauline, baby? Good old Larry Reed gets it. Oh, Larry Reed. Okay, Larry Reed now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fucking Larry you know, Reed. No. What happened to Pauline Anderson? Because when he was making jokes about my, uh, the robbery of my church, oh. I went at him, okay? And called him every name that I met. And what he did was he called the FBI as well. And he was on the phone with Brandon Belmonte. Oh, my God. The FBI informant. And the reason why I'm saying this what is because fuck? of this, right? We black preachers, they're trying to take us out. Oh. Any means necessary. And all that talk where he was sitting there saying, I guarantee y'all he'll get locked up in two to three months. Yeah. I guarantee y'all. You want to know why he knew that? Because him and Brandon Belmonte was working together. Huh? <sighs> <laughs> this man what's going on here what's going on here how did larry reed get into this and how did larry reed start working with the feds and how did larry reed and brandon Monte start working together to work with the feds did i hear that right or maybe i misheard that maybe, maybe listen listen i told you I'm, i listen i went to a public school so you gotta bear with me Unless I misheard that, according to Bishop, first was Brandon Belmonte. He was the, the centerpiece of it all. The feds planted him. Now, Larry Reed is involved. Larry Reed set all of this up. Larry Reed and Brandon Belmonte was working together all along. It was Larry Reed and Brandon Belmonte that set up the, everything. Did I mishear that? Correct me if I'm wrong if I misheard that. I'm just saying, Elijah, listen, listen, I'm just saying, maybe it's because of my, my, my public school education that I'm, I, maybe I'm slow. Because correct me if I'm wrong, he just said Larry Reed and Brandon Belmonte is the root cause. They did it. They did everything. It's them. I miss the CKB. This is not a law student show. This is a show about a law student, particular one. With for more than a decade, I've been in the state before all the events. Let me give a special shout out to baby girl, my Phyllis Carter, for the four ninety nine. I appreciate you, baby. So glad you come on tonight. <laughs> she hit me with the neff. I want to give a special shout out to Shanice for the one ninety nine. All these church announcements. Truly. Truly, truly appreciate you. I also want to give a special shout out to Trista for the five dollar cash app. I appreciate you, baby. Truly, truly, truly appreciate you. Listen, whatever is a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, ten dollars, or a thousand dollars, whatever it is, whenever you guys set me out, I truly, truly appreciate it. I cannot say that enough. I truly can't say it enough. This man just said Larry Reed. And Brandon Belmonte set him up. They were federal. First of all, what the fuck that has, what does that have to do with Pauline? I'm still waiting for him to address Pauline Anderson. I'm still waiting for him to address that. Right? What does that have to do with Pauline? Right? Still waiting for him to address that. Yeah, we jumping, V. I appreciate you, April. I don't know what the likes is. I, I might even switch it to the screen to see what the like, whatever the likes is. At least let us get it to 300, right? It's 440 of us. At least get it to 300. Right? Bees on Mars. Shout out to Bees on Mars for becoming a member. I appreciate you, champ. Appreciate you. 
supporting a brother with the membership. Truly, truly, truly appreciate it. Said, Elijah said, CKB and Mars when the Amazon return clear out, send a blessing your way. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. How did Larry Reed get involved in this? I know they got a case that's been pending forever. How did he get in? When did he become an informant? And why none of this came out? Why none of this came out? Or, or do we not believe it? Let's listen to this. Is, this is starting to get crazy. Let's, let's listen to more. First, I still want to know what's up with Pauline Anderson, but, but I need to hear what's going on with the Larry Reed situation. What's going on? Given the FBI information, mm -hmm. and that's why he played one time in one of his broadcasts a message from the FBI agent. They was calling him, too. So I just want to put that out there yeah. that you guys have to stop believing these YouTubers oh. because they're liars. Oh, the YouTubers and now. what they do is they will set a black man up or a preacher up to make it look like something that it really wasn't. So I want to say that. Hold on. What the fuck? That, what, 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 what did we do? <laughs> what did we do? I'm trying to figure out what he talk about. How, did, how does he, you know how crazy, this is so bipolar. How do you switch? So quick, like it me, it's almost like you know how he go on those transits when he about to block somebody. That's what that was like. <laughs> he just switched him. I want to be fucking YouTubers. Like he just switched over. Like what's that got to do with it? What is, what do we got to do with anything? I'm just trying to figure out what's up with Pauline Anderson. You put in the whole Larry D, Larry Reed and Brandon Belmonte thing. Now I want to know what's up with Larry Reed and Brandon Belmonte thing. What does it, what does it have to do with anything? I didn't do nothing. I'm just. It's, I'm not even actually saying anything. I'm letting you talk. <laughs> how, and if, how are we, how am, first of all, how am I, I can't even talk for other YouTube. I'm the little guy on the total. I'm the very little guy on the total. How is it that I'm lying? How can I lie about this? I'm just a little guy on the total. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I'm trying to get clarity on this stuff. Let's continue. The reason why I'm putting all this together you okay. know, is this. Okay. The FBI didn't have nothing mm. on me. And what they had to do was make it look like a scheme. So this is why they needed Pauline Anderson. Okay, we can Pauline Anderson now. Okay, okay let's Pauline get Anderson. I'm mind blown right now. Yeah, I'm just showing yeah. you guys mm -hmm. how this worked and how this stuff was put together. Oh, okay. So Pauline Anderson mm -hmm. was already suing me for $90,000 a year and a half ago. This was not nothing new. So what the FBI did was they needed to orchestrate and say that this was a scheme that Bishop Whitehead was doing. And in order for it to be a scheme, it has to be more than one person. It had to be two people. Right. So they pulled this civil case out and turned this civil case into a criminal matter. So now in the civil case, they're, they're, they were suing me saying that I took 90000 from them, right, mm. to purchase my own home. Right? One we in right now? No, another one. Okay. That I never purchased. That was all a lie. Yeah. The reason why Rashid Anderson, who was her son, the reason why he did that was because I removed him out of my ministry. I need y'all to understand this. Pastors get attacked by disgruntled members. Okay? So, so now he is upset that I removed him from my church. Okay? And when I removed him from my church, I helped him get his own home. I married him. I paid his mortgage. I did so much for him and his him and his wife. Yeah. Okay. Once he got his own, I mean, once he got his his property, he wanted to be a part of my real estate firm. I said, "Well, brother, you got to have money in order to be a part of this." Real estate said, firm. I got to try and get it. I'm gonna ask some family members. I said, "When you get it, you get it. Whatever." So then he comes back to me and say, "My mother and some other people are gonna help me." So I said, "Okay, well, you do what you got to do with them or whatever." All right. So I didn't talk. I never. Not one time I ever asked this lady for no money. And we went through the whole trial. Not we said not one time was she a member of your church. Never. The lady is not a the member of your church. The, she was never. <laughs> Why? What? What the fuck is going on? What was the point? Why did? Why did Brian have to ask whether or not she's a member of the church? Like, what was the point of him asking that very specific question? Was she a member of your church? Never was a. Why? What does that have to do with anything? 
Let's get, I'm trying to hear, I'm, listen, I'm trying to hear him out. Please stop interjecting. I'm trying to listen to what the brother has to say. Let's continue. Never a member of my ministry. Never. She came to my church maybe once when, I, when her son got ordained as a, as a minister. Wow. She was never a, mini, a, a, a member of my ministry, never tied. And I think she said she sold one time on a prayer line. She never even gave money in my church. Never. So now we have a disgruntled minister that has been removed from my ministry because he was disrespectful to other members and disrespectful to me. Right. So when I sat him down, right, the very next day, he said, well, I want my money back. I said, you want your money back? I said, we have a contract. Um, then you give your mother her contract. Then since you said your mother was getting, right. gave you the money. Right. And I said, we have, me and you have an oral contract that the money has to be in this firm for a year. And now all of a sudden you want this, um, the next you want the, the, yeah, you want it back because you got um, sat down. So um, his mother texts me for the first time. This is the first communication via text, via call. This is the first ever, ever. And she right. said, um, we want the money back. And I said, now you signed a contract with your son. You didn't have nothing to do with me. And she threatened me and said, cause I was running for borough president during that time. So she said, I'm going to call the police. I'm going to call um, the police. I'm going to call the news and I'm going to call your campaign. I said, do what you got to do then. You, 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 you threatening me with what? Like for what? Right. So um, now granted, this was a year for, this was for a year um, uh, agreement. They had, um, he just gave me the money November 30th, 2020. And now May 2021, it's only five months. For a one-year contract. For a one-year contract, right? It's only five months. And I just gave him $6,000 because, well, I gave him 5000 because he said his um, mother wanted to purchase property in Jamaica. So I said, listen, right. you can't keep touching. This is it. So I gave him the $5,000 and I gave him an additional $1,000 just to give to his mom because he said his agreement with his mother was giving her $100 a month for him, for her, for him, uh, for her loaning the money right. to him. Right. I never had nothing to do with it. Never had nothing to do with it. And we went through this with trial. I never text this lady, never called this lady ever, ever. So they, they have you at this point facing how many years? Well, the, 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 um, we can't just let that whole thing go by and not address nothing that he said. You think we're going to let this thing go by and address nothing that he said? So let's backtrack a little bit. So he says, first off, what contract? He just said that he has a contract with the son and the son's supposed to have a contract with her. And then he started speaking about an oracle. What contract? I thought it was no contract. I thought, according to him, he was supposed to keep the money for a year. Don't know what he's supposed to do with it. He's supposed to keep money for a year and then give her the money back plus whatever home he was supposed to give her. In fact, actually, let's look at the, let's see what the man said. Let's see what his, what his understanding of the, uh, of the deal was. Let's go to it. All right, so let's let's go to it. Let's see what his understanding of this deal. So he says, so now let's go to what the lawyer actually asked him. Let's go to what his lawyer asked him. So let's go back. Let's go back. The $90,000 investment, Rashid Anderson became a business partner, became a partner or a business. So I told him that the money that he puts in, I'm going to let him know what properties, what properties we are going to purchase. You know, you, just, you know shit and give him the opportunity to say how much of the money you want to go into this property. Right. And then that that would be your your percentage of what you get back out of it because I was purchasing multiple properties. So I would think that, and as I was talking to him, I would say, listen, if I'm purchasing a property A, B, or A, B, and C, you split your money up, but you put 20,000 here, 20,000 here. So the money that, that was given, Rashid Anderson was looking to make a profit on that money. Yeah, yeah, because he kept saying he needs income, he needed extra money. So essentially, what he's essentially saying was, the $90,000, according to Bishop now, $90,000 that he gave him was for him to, I guess, piecemeal and a variety of different properties, right? Piecemeal and a variety of different properties. Even if that's true, let's just say if that's true, let's just exclude everything that Pauline Anderson said. Because, you know, Pauline Anderson said that Bishop was on a phone with her and actually she, he coped convince her to take out the hundred thousand dollar loan right she convinced her that's what Pauline is saying Pauline is said that she 
made mention that she wanted to get a property at the place at closing when she signed an FHA home loan and he was there and he saw that his tentacles came up, right? So when she subsequently was moving forward to get the loan, he was on the phone. He walked her through the process the entire time. So let's ignore it. Let's just say that didn't happen. Let's just say Pauline Dennis is a liar. Let's just go solely and exclusively with Bishop Lamar Whitehead just testified to. His testimony was this $90,000 was to be piecemealed into a variety of different properties because he's an investment real estate investor. It was going to go 20 here, 20 there, 20 there. And then he would have that, that percentage so he can make some money. Let's just say if that's true. And also, let's just say if the year thing, this whole year timeline for he was to put the money in and get the money back within it. Let's just say if that was true too. What properties did he even offer was she to invest in? And when was these offers made? We do know that he sent Pauline Anderson to look at some places. We also do know that he emailed him. I mean, he sent Rasheed Anderson an email of this $6 million home. We do know that. We know those two facts because he both admitted to those two facts. But even excluding those two facts, if you took $90,000 and according to you, your understanding of this, this $90,000 was to be piecemeal into a variety of different properties. And then those pieces that he put in would be the percentage that he owns. So let's just say if the property is going for twenty for one million dollars, and all Rashid has is twenty thousand dollars to put in, that means he will have 0.2 percent ownership of that property. Let's just say that's the case. Where are the properties that he offered him to even put money down? Right, that's one. Considering you didn't give him any properties to put money down. You got the money November 30th. I mean, November 2020, 2020. What happened to the money? November 2021. Those are the questions. Let's see if he answers it. Let's just see if he circles back. Cause he kind of like ran through it and didn't address it. Let's see if he circles back to those two specific questions. Let's go. Why fraud? Uh, deals with uh, well, wire fraud. The maximum is twenty years for wire fraud. However, what they're saying the wire fraud is is they said that I text them. That's what they said. They're saying because the ninety thousand dollars. They're not saying that that's, that was the wire fraud. They're saying that the see people don't understand wire fraud is just communication. Mm -hmm. If you go on the phone with them, that's wire fraud. Mm -hmm. If you go online, that's wire fraud. Yeah. If you that that's what that is, right? So all of this. Was made, this is a civil case, which we're still in civil court. Right. However, since I'm not working with the FBI to take down the mayor, they made this into a criminal matter. So now when you go to, um, now when you go to counts two or counts three, right, that's Brandon Belmonte, right? Brandon Belmonte, he did not come to court. They did not want him to come to court. Wow, right? <sighs> so what we did was, we wow said, shit. we're going to call him. They said, we're going to call him as a, we're going to call him as a witness. And it's called, a hostile witness. That's what it's called. Yeah. So when we call, when they don't want to call him. So we call him and the, well, the prosecutors filed a motion and said, we cannot allow Bishop Whitehead um, to call Brandon Belmonte. We called his lawyer and his lawyer said, all he's going to do is plead the fifth. So I said, how can he plead the fifth? How can you go to the FBI and say, I committed all these crimes and, and then they have nothing to say. And then you say, you plead the fifth. I said, no, we're not letting that happen. So Go again. The, 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 the judge said, well, let me hear the questions and let me hear what he, how he answered. So we asked him, did Bishop Whitehead try to extort you? Mm. He said, um, under, under the advice of my counsel, I plead the fifth amendment. Did Bishop Whitehead try to get $500,000 from you and real estate from you in exchange for um, government favors from the mayor of Eric, um, from the mayor of New York, Eric Adams. He said, I plead the fifth. He, I said, he, they said, we said, did you tamper with any of the recordings that you made uh, against uh, Bishop Whitehead? He played the fifth. We are tampering about oh, tampering with the, the yeah, about tampering with the recordings. He played the fifth. We asked him, um, uh, um, uh, we asked him, did he, um, did he set me up? Was this a sting operation? He pled the fifth. So all of the questions, and it's a bunch of more questions, all of the questions that we asked him, 
were the questions that we would have asked him in front of the jury that would have showed the jury that he's lying, right? So the jury don't know about these questions because he was never wow. allowed to testify right. in front of the jury. So counts two and three, counts two is, um, is, um, is uh, attempt wire fraud and count three is attempt extortion. So he didn't even show up. So there's no testimony. The only testimony is they played the recordings. He recorded me by himself six times on his own phone. And you know how they let that in? How? They let another FBI agent come in and say, you're not gonna believe this. They said, I'm familiar with Bishop Whitehead's voice and I'm familiar with Brandon Belmonte's voice. So therefore it should be let in and he let it in. There was no authentication. Was it altered? There was no, there's, there was no real foundation. So now they're playing the audio of an informant that set me up that's now entangling the jury. Well, first though, let me backtrack a little bit. First of all, I still don't know. I don't know what the fuck this has to do with anything with Pauline Anderson. I have no clue. What does this have to do with Pauline Anderson and this ninety thousand dollars? But let's just let's just pencil. Let's just put Pauline Anderson to the side because he keeps mentioning this whole Fifth Amendment thing. Let me explain something to you about the Fifth Amendment. I mean, plead the Fifth Amendment. The law says this. A prosecutor cannot knowingly call a witness to the stand that they know is going to plead the fifth. Because what that does for the because what that does is if the prosecutor knows this witness is going to plead the fifth and brings them on a stand is essentially forcing this person to invo invoke his his or her fifth amendment right, which then represents this, which then places that witness unavailable. So whatever evidence or whatever you know, testimony that this witness could have possibly put up. The prosecutor kind of messed that up, messed the case. And that's, that's an actual, that's a mistrial. That could be a mistrial, right? Because you're kind of like, you're, you're depriving a person of a due process right for a fair trial because essentially you're depriving that the cues, the ability to call a witness that's, that's somewhat favorable. A second thing when it comes to the Fifth Amendment, you could waive your Fifth Amendment. You can have your Fifth Amendment right revoked. If you answer questions, that's anything of evidentiary, evidentiary value to whatever the testimony is supposed to be. Now, we're not talking about like um, pedigree information, like your name, your date of birth, right? Your residence, right? You can ask, you can answer those questions, but you can't cherry pick what you want to answer and what you don't want to answer under the guise of Fifth Amendment. You can't say, um, well, were you, were you at the scene? I plead the fifth. Um, did you have the pistol? No, I didn't have nothing. Well, did you shoot anybody? I plead the fifth. You can't do that. Once you answer a single question, a single question, then you revoke the ability to plead the fifth and a court can actually not only um, sanction you, right? Hold you in contempt, but they can force you. They can compel you to answer. So when you look at, when you look at the, um, Bishop's own motion, right? Let's go to his motion right quick. Where the hell is his motion at? Because he asked a, a number of questions, or at least the questions that he was going to pose to the court. Where the hell is his damn motion at? Hold on for one second. No, that's not it. Uh, there we go. So this is Bishop Lamar Whitehead's motion. Let's look at it. Let's look at the questions that he asked. Mr. Bre um, Be Mr. Belmonte testified outside of the presence of me. Let me load this up a little bit. Fuck. All right. He said, Mr. Brandon, Mr. Belmonte testified outside of the presence of the jury on March 5th, 2024. Mr. Belmonte responded to questions asking his age, the state he is currently resides in, and confirming that he knows Lamar Whitehead. After this point, Mr. Belmonte, on the advice of counsel, invoked his Fifth Amendment rights. And he's the subsequent questions is what he and what this lawyer intended on asking him. Right. And the question is, and can you tell me how you know uh, Mr. Whitehead? Can you tell me was the first time you met Mr. Whitehead? And can you tell me, do you own a body shop? And can you tell us, have you owned any business businesses before? And so forth and so on. Where it goes even to the point that did Brandon Bama say ever extort you? Did he actually own any business in the Bronx? Um, it, you know, did you did was there agreement to reimburse for for the five thousand dollar rental payment, so forth and so on? He can't answer any of those questions, even the even questions that don't even seem to be in any remote 
way to incriminate him. They can't answer anything because it's a part of the evidentiary. It's, excuse me, it's a part of the evidence that they're trying to put put in to quit. Otherwise, find Bishop not guilty. So he's misstating, or at least he's he's making it seem that um, Brandon Belmont say of either cherry picked his answers or Brandon Belmont say elected to not answer this or not answer that. When it comes to the Fifth Amendment, you can't elect. You either have to plead it all the way through. Or nowhere or, or nowhere at all. You can't with this answer or that answer. That's just the way it is. Otherwise, the court would compel you to answer as well as hold you in contempt, which is lock you the fuck up. Right? So that's that. Now, as it pertains to how this or what this have to do with Pauline Anderson and that $90,000 that we still haven't figured out as the whereabouts thereof, still don't know. And I'm still trying to figure out whether or not this pastor, Pastor Brian, is going to bring him around, bring him back. Okay, so what about the count one? What about that 90000 that money that you say? I understand you, you know, you had a dealing with the kid and, you know, apparently they had some contract. I understand that. But eventually you did come to that $90,000 and eventually you knew. Or at least acknowledge that $90,000 came from Pauline and said, what happened to Why not turn it back? It's like his lawyer asked, right? At this point, do you realize that they want their money back? Why not just give it back? Let's see if he answers. Let's see if he gets into that. Well, let me go back to it. Right. So, so we already went through count four. Count four, y'all already know, lying to the FBI agent because... Well, you, we already know that I didn't lie to them, but they wanted me to set the mail up, and I told them I'm not doing it. They asked me, do you have another cell phone that we can call you on? I told them, no. Simple. And then the last one was wire fraud. Get a load of this. Six years ago, they said somebody uploaded on, online to a company called Fundora. Now, I know a lot of you guys get pop-ups and, right. and asking you, you can be pre-qualified right. from companies that are not even banks. So they said that I... Um, filled this application out to a company that's not even a bank. And they said that I uploaded fraudulent documentation. Good God. Right? He said, good granted. God. They searched my whole house. They took every computer. He said, they good God. Computer. They took every electronics. Yeah. They did not find one fraudulent document. And Bishop, you're facing how many years? Well, if you look at... Um, God, this nigga don't answer no questions at all. Uh, wire fraud, two counts, attempt wire fraud, and extortion. It's probably... The max yeah. be somewhere over 45 years. The max. For, uh, just so that I'm clear and so they're clear. Mm -hmm. You're facing 45 years with mm -hmm. no corroboration testimony, with the key witness pleading the fifth, and no substantiated evidence. None. None at all. And the lead FBI agent did not testify at all because they know that he lied on six search warrants to, a, to, to six different federal judges. I'd be in the bed right now eating Doritos. That'd be me. I, I'd just be walking around in flannel pajamas with, with the temperature up at 83, <laughs> looking for a sycamore tree just to be under. How are you maintaining your, feet, your faith uh, and your peace? Uh, you don't seem to be rattled or shaken or stirred. Uh, I've had the grace to be able to talk to you before we get in front of the camera, so you ain't putting on. Right. Uh, you, you, you are at peace. How are you maintaining it knowing in 30 days, you're going back to face this system. Um, you know, there's something where people say I, you, you trust God, but what happens when you have to really live it, right? Wow. And um, I wouldn't be me if I was to panic. If I'm still wearing Fendi and they didn't change me, if I'm still wearing Louis, why should I change that? I tell people you got to keep that same energy, yeah. right? You know, when God is blessing and you buying this and you buying that and you live in life and you smiling. What what happened when the storm come? Mm. Well, I'm gonna give up now. But yeah, I'm still gonna preach to the people and tell them that you gotta have faith. Right? Yeah. How, how would that work? My father was beaten and strangled to death by 16 police officers Ooh. in YPD. This is because of the color of his skin. Yeah. I had to grow up without a father. Right? My mama, my grandmother raised me. You know, grow up in a in, in a mean did anybody ever get to the bottom as to who his real father is? Do anybody actually know him as a kid? Because I'm, you know, I want to impress at least as it pertains to the family members of the Millers, he's not a relation. According to the Millers, 
he is not really, they don't even know the man, right? So if that's the case, do anybody know who his pops is, right? Has anybody ever came to that conclusion as to who his father actually is? For the individuals who, who don't believe that's his father, um, Arthur Miller is his father, right? So all we have is what's online, like, right, right? I don't know his, the, the intimate, I don't know his, his complete background, right? Who is his father? Oh my God. Don't, <laughs> Natasha said, my, oh man, you're not giving him no space. You're not giving him no, you're like, this, 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 this is your father, motherfucker. You're not giving him no space. But for real, anybody ever figured out who his father is? Hmm? I'm curious. Let me give a special shout out to Keisha for the ten dollar holla. Super sick. I appreciate you. Truly, truly appreciate you. Let me give a special shout out to G for the nine for the for the dollar ninety nine. So Jamal, he says. So Jamal didn't do his homework. So disappointed. Appreciate you, G. Appreciate you. Oh, let me see something. I gotta check Keisha out. I gotta check. Don't mind me. I gotta check Keisha out. Right. Keisha, Keisha. It's cheeks. I'm Mr. CKB. This is not a law student show. This is a show about a law student in particular. Well, if for more than a decade, I've been in the state we call the legal business. If you just tuning in, if you just tuning in, talking about Bishop Lamar Whitehead, we're talking about this interview that he's undergoing. We're talking about whether or not his claims of innocence will be answered from this interview. That's what we're talking about. And while we're talking about it, I want to give a grand, grand shout out to Benita for the fifty dollar holla cash out. A personalized note, I appreciate you for the fifty one for the fifty ball cash out for the fifty ball. I truly, truly. Truly appreciate you. I'm telling you, I don't even understand how much I appreciate you. I can't say that enough. When you guys set me out, dollar, two dollars, three dollars, ten dollars, thousand, whatever it is, my mom asked for anything. The only thing I asked for is to keep these likes up. It's 430 something people in here. At least let me get a let me get 75% of that. So at least let me get it to 350 something, right? But then when y'all get hit me with the chevy on top, when y'all give me that, that, that extra oomph. You say, you know what? This is you. This is all. I don't have much. You know, we're not rich like Bishop and them. But the little bit that I do have, as for you, champ, I appreciate that. I cannot say it enough. Cannot say it enough. So, Benita, truly appreciate it. And that's everybody. You know, a dollar, two dollars, whatever it is, I truly appreciate it. Because again, I don't ask, but when you do, when you think, whatever you see in this, the value you see in this, and you set me out, I truly appreciate it. But all, but, all, but all actuality, do anybody know his papa? Anybody know the pappy? Right? If if Arthur Miller is not his pops, who's the pappy? Right? Unless is he is he is he Jesus? Is this an immaculate conception? I know we're not saying that. Right? I'm just saying. I know we're not saying that. <laughs> yeah, you ain't giving him no space. <laughs> Lady said, Jesus said, Ye are of our your father, the devil. Balzabob. Satan. I think I see somebody say Satan in here. What Nikki said. Uh, it's like it's like he's an orphan. <laughs> And I give him no space. All right, let's get back to it. Streets of Brooklyn. Yeah. Right? Hold on, let me miss something. I don't hand. You buying this and you buying that mm -hmm. and you living life and you smiling. What, what happened when the storm come? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to give up now. But yeah, I'm still going to preach to the people and tell them that you got to have faith. Right? Yeah, how would that work? My father. It's Pappy. 
was beaten, strangled to death by 16 police officers. Ooh. NYPD. Just because of the color of his skin. Yeah. I had to grow up without a father. Right? My mama, my grandmother raised me. You know, grew up in, a, in, in the mean streets of Brooklyn. Yeah. Mean right? streets of Brooklyn. I don't have a give up. Who the fuck says mean streets right? anymore? What is and How old is this nigga? Stereotype that mean streets. I ain't no punk man, no, no, no sissy, no, no sucker. And <laughs> I'm not no gonna sucker. Fall. And whatever yeah, comes my way, I have to really trust Jesus, right? I think because I really trust him. Like I, I like I have my own relationship. You believe what you preach. Yes. And you stand on it. Yes. So how can I fold now, uh, Dr. Jamal? Yeah. Like, how can I fold now? Is it part faith or is it part because you're not broken because you've done time before? No, it has nothing to do with what I did before. And that was, you know, that, that was a whole nother thing. And check that out. Yeah, I did time before and for what? Um, for Grand Velocity. Um, but listen to this. Oh my God. Did y'all hear what he said he did time for? Could y'all tell me? Can somebody in chat tell me what it is he was convicted for and did time for? Grand larceny? This boy is the best that ever did it, champ. This boy is the best that ever did it. Yo, Lance, you ready, baby? Let me start pulling some people. Listen, I dropped the link in the chat. If y'all want to pull up as we cover this content, pull up. Because this it's just, he's like, I don't even know which way he's going to go. But let me bring my first, my first contestant. Listen, remember, keep it PG. Let, hold up, do me a favor. Bring down your uh, camera a little bit so I can see what's on with you if you're wearing something. Because sometimes, all right, cool. Sometimes, you know, listen, I know sometimes I'm bare back too, but you got to understand, we, you know. All right, cool. Ready? Shout out to Lance a lot. What's up, Chan? Yeah, Chan, Mr. K. What's up? What's up? I appreciate you. What's up? What's up? Talk to me. No, man. I mean, like, uh, I I have, I don't like police. I was military, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And like, um, nah. I mean, people be infringing on people's rights. That ain't mm -hmm. cool, man. Right, that's, that's understandable. Well, what do you think that about? Let cool. me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What do you think about um, Bishop's position on the feds? Do you think the feds did in fact slam his head on the ground and force him to open up his phone? Or threaten to force him up, or you think that's true? His old, the whole um, narrative that that they're like, essentially, you know, punishing him for not wanting to work with them to get the New York City mayor. You think that's true? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, you cannot um, search somebody without their uh, consent. Mm -hmm. um, that's not cool. It, it's not cool, man. Like. Uh, I know they want to do their investigation, mm -hmm. but you can't uh, take somebody's rights away from them. You don't need to give up your right to search, and you don't need to ID. And um, no, that that's just all wrong. And um, definitely with violence, definitely not. No. Right, and, and and you believe that's all true. What he said is true. Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's fair. Hey, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. So as it pertains to um the other counts, right? When you look at the um count one, which is the wire fraud against Paulie Anderson, when you look at count two and three, which is the claims against Brandon Belmonte, right? And then obviously we get count five, which is the claims against the bank. What's your position on all of those counts? Are you the, you're in the position that that um, Bishop Lamar Whitehead is innocent of the, all of this stuff, or you're in the position that you 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 don't need to give up your right to search and seizure outside, outside of that. Outside of that, so that's the government part. That's the false statement part, right? And also that's the ascertaining of a cell phone. But the cell phone and the evidence thereof isn't necessarily directing directly attributable to what happened with him and Brandon Belmonte. Because remember, what Brandon Belmonte. The facts surrounding that was that Bishop and Brandon enter into this agreement that he owed him five 
Brandon owes him $5,000. And then according to the feds, at least according to the indictment, Brand Bishop threatened Brandon Omase to pay him back. And then subsequently to that, there's the issue with the uh, the wire fraud. According to the indictment, the wire fraud with Brandon Belmonte was about Bishop leveraging his position with the mayor, right? In exchange for favors of the mayor, he would pay him, Brandon would pay him $500,000 $500, plus interest in the property. So again, that those two counts has nothing to do with the search warrant. So I hear you on the search warrant aspect, right? And I agree with you. No one should have four fifth day, fourth amendment right. We all have a fourth amendment right to be free from self um, search and seizure. But I was standing at what is your position specifically on the Brandon Belmonte aspects, the extortion? The, the Wire well as... Act of 1962, mm -hmm. right? I, I believe that's when it was. The Wire Act of 1962. Um, a very controversial ruling in Congress and in law is the Wire Act. I, I think it's 1962. Can you correct me if I'm wrong? Well, it's under Title the, Title the Eighteen. Wire it's it's not a wire act. It's a it's a it's a fraud no, act. It's, it's it's a fraud act, and the wiring aspect came after. It was it was originally a mail fraud. That's where this law came around. It was mail fraud? No, we didn't necessarily have like electronic communications back when these laws came about. Remember the, the original the original the the origins of these fraud crimes was about like just lying to the to the to the to the king, right? So. When we took over these laws, when we adopted from the Magna Carta and brought it here to America, a lot of the laws that came from Europe is the same laws that we have here. But as technology expounded and we was able to get more advanced, we had to actually come up with times because, you know, when technology comes, people are going to take advantage of uh, to technology. They're going to perpetrate crimes. So when we had the ability to text, email, make phone calls, things of that nature, we had to modify and codify these different kinds of frauds in the title to expound Title 18. In fact, the wire fraud um, specific subsection was something that was later put on to the Title 18 Act. So there's no wire act. That's I don't know where you get that from. I mean, I mean there is, but let, let's just forget that. I, I agree with your point. Mm -hmm. Um that there there was like confiscating mail but was there a warrant involved in this case on confiscating personal mail well it wasn't or... about mail it's remember so mail so so taking mail is separate in the state from a wire this wasn't a mail fraud can't claim this was a wire claim and a wiring wasn't this what wiring is is loosely stated with the communications electronic communication that's the whole that's the whole term of wire it's electronic communication. And electronic communication was the emails and text messages. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to look up the Wire Act. In 1961, I was one year off. Um, the Wire Act of, Act of 1961. You, you still need a warrant to uh, obtain those things. Um, it, like, so, so, so I, I don't want to tell you my background because that's not important. But the Wire Act of 1961 is legal, but you still need a warrant. And um, so, just do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor, because I don't want I don't want you to spry away. What's the name of the actual statute? Don't say an act. It's a it's a it's a code. It's a statute. Okay. Okay. The, the Wire Act of 1961 is U.S. federal law. Hold on. Um, what title was let, it? In let me let me find it. I'll, I'll find it. it. It's the not Wire Act of 1961, but um, let's that that this was mainly a gambling law, but right. so right, so so because that right, so you not to go into a a, a subject that has absolutely okay. nothing to oh, do with the statute. It, it, it it's I, I got you right. You want yeah. the amendment? No, I want you to know. Tell me what the statute says. Not an amendment, the statute. What is the actual statute? I mean, I've got to look that up, dude. Like, I'm not a lawyer. You, but you brought this up. I got like, I'm. I, you brought this up. I didn't bring up the it, wire. It's Act. 18 U.S. Code 1084, and it, it's it's sort of. And all right, so all right, so and what is and what is Bishop Brandon? Which is what is Bishop? The my whitehead being charged with what statute is he being charged with? Uh, 
I don't think it. I don't think it's constitutional or legal. No, but right? what, I don't know what you're talking about. What is the statute that Bishop is being charged with? 18 U.S. Code 1084. He's not being charged with that. He's being charged with Title 18 U.S.C. 1343. No, 1084. No, he's not. He's being charged with 13 USC. I'm looking. Let's let's look at the statute itself. Let's look at the let's look at the indictment together. If you if you could just indulge me for a second, and then I'm gonna move on a bit. Let's let's look at the statute. This is the statute. This is what he's being charged with. All right. This is the indictment. Type it so I can read it as you well. You can look at it at the screen. See the statute okay. it says section 1343, not 1084. This is the statute that he's actually being charged with. Right. This is the wire fraud statute. Right. Wire fraud. Let's go further up to Pauline Anderson's to, to um Bishop um, Brandon Beaumont's specific crime, which is count two, right? Attempted wire fraud. See that? See that? Yes. So you can't make up stuff to fit a narrative. You got to go on with the facts, say, right? So we're not necessarily we, you know, I, you know, one of the things about me. Right. I don't know. I'm not necessarily familiar with your name, so I don't necessarily really see it a lot. But one of the things about me specifically is when I talk about stuff, I actually pull up the docket. That's why I, I'm so keen on pulling up documentation, because a, a lot of us have an idea as to how things work. Some do some some actually have real experience. Some doesn't don't have real experience. But rather than getting muddy down as to who knows what. I would pull up what, you know, Aunt Debbie said, receipts, right? That way it's not me making it up. It's not you making it up. It's This is what it is, right? So when you look at what he's actually charged with, that's all we can go off, of, right? We can't go off of what we want it to be or we can go off of what the statute says. And what is the burden of proof that the prosecutor had? The burden of proof is by reasonable that they're doubt. they're guilty. I agree. No, right, no, by reasonable doubt that we approve every element of this. Bishop enjoys the presumption of innocence until they meet that burden of proof. They met it, but so it's his conviction. Now it's on Bishop's burden to show he wasn't, he was innocent, right? You, Which he would have to you, go through his I whole totally, thing. I totally agree. Look, uh, I, what I'm trying to say is what is I, I had a clearance or whatever, and the American government does things that they should not. That's true. Um, I agree with that. And I, I think that people are guilty until proven innocent. In fact, I've been found guilty of crimes I was one million percent innocent of. I've never committed a crime. And it, it was disgusting. I, I was um, put on prejudice and um, found guilty of a crime. I did not come. I didn't commit a crime. But, you know, I had to just say, hey, DA, whatever. I'll plead guilty because I don't want to go through another 10 months of court or two, three years of court because I went to court like three times for it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, innocent, innocent, innocent. And they're like, well, we're going to find you guilty. And it's like, you know what? Like, fuck, I'll pay $1,000. I, I don't even care. Well, listen, um, listen, listen, let me stop it right there. Right. And obviously, I don't want you to, to, to put out your personal business like that unless you think you want to. But the fact that you said, you you know, effort, you would pay it a thousand dollars. At the very least, I can glean from that. It wasn't a serious offense. Right. No, it was not a right. serious and offense. I, and that's, that's at least she was able to get out of it without having I, to worry about that seriousness of it. I would imagine it's some some low wage uh, misdemeanor. Well, I, I had to pay a thousand dollars. It's that low well, wage. If, if anything is a fine. Well, you, in comparison to two hundred fifty thousand dollars, yeah, because that's what Bishop is facing up to two hundred fifty thousand or, or, or like jail time or twenty you know? years or both. It could be both. Yeah, it could be twenty or years both. and two hundred fifty or either. Or, right. So, but again, that yeah, no, I just said, you know what? It, it's easier if I just pay the thousand dollars. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes not only is it easier. Sometimes that may be the better solution. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. Look what you just say. You say, you listen, I was tired of going back and forth. Nine times out of 10, you know you're going to be railroaded. Nine times out of 10, you was given a proper representation that you are, you are entitled to. 
And nine times Correct. out of 10, the police didn't even have the evidence that they claimed to have. Correct. Right? And, and the judge the judge was also a liar. Um, it, it was all bullshit, but I didn't want to have to go through, like, uh, like I said, I don't want to go through five years and put fees right. for lawyers. Like, right. I'll just pay and say whatever. Right, right, right. Well, listen, well, listen, listen, listen. I appreciate you pulling up. I want to continue on with the with the show. All right, but I'll, I'll be you, out, buddy. Listen, listen, uh, you thank have, you for having you, me. Right. If you have any lasting words, just give us your lasting words. You know, um, God. If you want to fight for what is right, go ahead and do it. It's just going to be a hard road because all the systems are screwed up from the judicial and uh, all of the three, right? Executive, uh -huh. judicial, and, and um, la, 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 it's all with an L. That's all right, legislative. There we go. You're welcome. There we all go. Right. Shout out to you, champ. Shout out to you. Listen, <laughs> gotta cut him some slack, baby. Gotta cut him some slack. I'm Mr. CKB, and I appreciate the appreciate the patience you have with the fellow brother. Be woke. I see you, baby. I see you, baby, for the 1999. Deborah, I see you, baby, for the five dollar holla. I see you. I see you. I see you. I'm Mr. CKP. This is not a law student show. This is a show about a law student in particular. But for more than a decade, I've been in this thing called illegal business. So listen, at least we have somebody who believes in a good bishop. Right? We have somebody that believes in the bishop. The link is in the chat. If you want to pull up, you could pull up. Listen, everybody is welcome. This, this, is, not, this is not a vacuum. This is not a hate bishop back. Listen, we can't hate. How could I hate your favorite bishop? How? How's that possible? Right? You guys not going to love me if I hate your favorite bishop. Right? So I got to show your favorite bishop some love. So this is one of those places where you could, you know, you could pull up. You could, you could talk about it. Right? You know, we could flirt a little bit. Maybe we could fall in love. Right? Let's get back. While we do that, let's get back. Let's get back to what was happening with this goddamn interview. Let's get back to it. This was done um, in Suffolk County, right? Suffolk County is the most racist county in New York, right? And the prosecutor, right? And, you know, they keep doing these things with these search warrants because yeah. they did these fake search warrants against me too, but that's a whole nother thing. But the prosecutor that prosecuted me, his name was Thomas Foda. He's in federal penitentiary right now for tampering with uh, witnesses and doing all type of stuff. Wow. So when people talk about Bishop Whitehead, yeah. you got to really know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. I'm not perfect, but I'm not wrong here. I'm yeah. innocent. And um, my ministry, God allowed me to start my ministry mm. to save souls, mm. right? to go out to the masses. People don't even know. 50 Cent gave his life to God under my ministry. Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave his, he gave his. Let me stop right there. He said people don't know 50 Cent gave his life to my ministry. People don't know that. How many, put a one in the chat if you know 50 Cent was at his church. Put a one in the chat if he didn't force down that, force down that fact down our throats that these rappers came to his church. Put a two in the chat if you didn't know. If you didn't know, if it's news to you that 50 Cent went to his spot. If it's news to you, put it two. If it's if you knew this because he can't help but stop talking about this shit, put one in the chat. I'm just saying. Because correct me if I'm wrong, he has that on his Instagram. Correct me if I'm wrong. But let's continue. Let's continue on with the content. His life to under my ministry in 2018. Oh, 2018. And he was right in the church and I preached, get the strap. That was my message. And him and a, a few other known rappers that was there gave their life to Jesus Christ. I got the video and all that, but I don't post none of that. That's right. something, you know, yeah. and- Hold up. Did he just say he didn't post that? Hold on, let me, maybe I may get, remember, I'm a, listen, I went to public school, so you gotta bear with me. I, I may, 
You know, I'm not as as slick and, and and on point as you guys. So let's go back just a bit. What did he What did he say about Fifty Cent and the people, and what he did or didn't post? Let's go. Back. He gave his He gave his life to under my ministry in 2018, mm -hmm. and he was right in the church, and I preached, "Get the strap." That was my message, and him and a, a few other known rappers that was there gave their life to Jesus Christ. I got the video and all that, but I don't post none of that. That's right. something you know. I got the video of that, but I don't post none of that. Let's see what's on his Instagram, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is actually on his Instagram. Let's, let's, let's tap it. Let's see what happens. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is his actual Instagram right here, right? And correct me if I'm wrong. It is posted, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, but that is 50 Cent. And correct me if I'm wrong. Look at your man with the it's fucking like, smile. Look at your yes, man. Sir. He's so happy. Look at his face. Look at his face. <laughs> Yo, look how happy he is, sir. I got something. Correct me if I'm wrong. He also has who's this? I love the words that the bishop was giving. I remember the first time I met him. Oh, we was look at that smile. You can't listen. You can't look at that smile. Can't shake that smile, right? What else he got up there? Was that Casanova? I appreciate you, man. Look at your man. Star, man. You know, Let me see if he crack a smile. Let's see if he smile. I wasn't gonna come Is he gonna smile for us? You can't stop that smile. Hold on. Let's just make sure we clear. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's a, that's a smile, right? Look at Zab Judah. I'm very thankful for this. Look at your man. He's such in love with himself. Look at it. Somebody say, why don't somebody just give him a, uh, some napkins of Vaseline? You know, we Look at your man. A lot of times we got a long history. Yeah. A lot of Look at your man. He got the itches and scratchies, right? What else he got posted? I can't. Go Mano. I watch my mouth. mouth. Hey. We got that smile. You can't listen. Your man got that smile. Your man got that smile, right? Love the rappers. In love with these rappers. Who else he got up there? I know he had uh, Takashi one time. Let me see if I can find him and Takashi. Right? I think he was looking. Look at Takashi. Right? Yep. Smiling. Oh, boy. Yo, free before man. Anything, man. And he's a free man. This is, listen, 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 listen. This is after Takashi did the whole snitching thing. And look who he's hugged up with. Doesn't he have a problem with snitches? Now, he, look, look who he's hugged up with. He has a big problem with Brandon Belmonte. But look who he's hugged up with. Look who he's hugged up. Look at the smile, though. Right? What did he say here again? Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me, let's, let's listen to this again. Let me, let me just see something. Wow, to the masses. People don't even know. 50 Cent gave his life to God under my ministry. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave his, he gave his life to under my ministry in 2018. Mm-hmm. And he was right in the church, and I preached, get the strap. That was my message. And him and a, a few other known rappers that was there gave their life to Jesus Christ. I got the video and all that, but I don't post none of that. That's right. I got the video and all that, but I don't post none of that. Right? Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. But them videos is posted. Did I hear him right? Maybe I didn't hear him right. Maybe I misheard him. But them shits is posted. I don't know. Let's continue. Something, you know, yeah. and um, Takashi 6 9 he gave his life to, to God. Under your ministry. Under my ministry. Um, Keisha Cole, she accepted Jesus Christ. Um, I can go on and on. Yeah. I can go on and on with all of the different celebrities yeah. that entrusted me where that I pray with them behind the scenes and you would never notice because yeah. I don't got to talk, right? And that's why the devil was mad. So therefore, the devil said, I have to kill his credibility mm. because if I kill his credibility, then nobody will believe him. So this is why everybody talks about what I wear, what I drive, yeah. how much money I have. Oh, he's fake. You want to know why? Because the enemy knows that I'm a detriment to the kingdom of Satan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, the reason why, you know, 
and I know you have more questions, but the reason why I came on this show, and this is the first podcast that I've ever done. Thank you. And CNN, MSNBC, ABC, Picks, you name them. They all want me to do it today, right now. Right. And they did not get what I'm giving because um, Jamal or Dr. Brian, um, I believe in what God has done for you. Right. Yeah. I sit back and I watch because I don't have a lot of preacher friends mm-hmm. at all, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and you know, in this genre, there's a lot of jealousy. Yeah. Right. And there's a lot of competition. That's right. So um, I took a chance to be vulnerable with you. Thank you. I prayed about it. Yeah. And, um, and once God gave me the clear for it, I'm, I'm all here. And I just want to say to you and your ministry, and I talk about the ministry that God's given you, yeah. I thank God for that. Because you never know who's watching. Yeah. And I watch. Yeah. And I see your love for God no matter what. Yeah. You know what I mean? And no, we as a lot. young preachers, you know, we the next ones up. Yeah. And one thing that we don't do genuinely, we don't encourage, encourage each other. Yeah. What we do is bless each other to blind each other. Wow. You know? Yeah, that's strong. Right. And, and that and it becomes a game. Yeah. It becomes, let me tell him what I think he wants to hear. Yeah. So I can get close or I can preach at his church or he can help me out. Right. I, I tell people, I don't want nothing from you. Whatever God say, do, do. But that's, that's just what it is. You've amassed uh, great, quite a deal of a success in real estate. <laughs> uh, and uh, one of uh, oh criticisms or critiques was you are the largest uh, black um, building owner in Hartford, Connecticut. You have multiple properties, which out of uh, your own mouth uh, have uh, done well. Mm-hmm. Then why was the church renting? So we own the building, right? You ain't say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You so, don't say that. We talk, we talk about that. Yeah. 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 So the building that we were renting, yeah. right, we didn't own that one, but we owned our own church building. However, <laughs> um, I purchased the building from um, the owners that purchased it from the auction. So this building was auctioned. And I'm not going to put her name out, but a real estate agent, she's a preacher, who she's like, Bishop, let me just say something on your behalf. I said, no, because this is a lot of heat. You don't, right. you don't want this smoke, right? But she came to me while we were still in the other building. And she said to me, Bishop, I found the church, right? These guys just bought it from the auction. Yeah. I said, introduce me to them. And I met with them and I purchased the building. The only thing is that. God, well, I don't even understand this. Like, I just don't understand this. Do I have to book it? Do I have to book it? Correct me if I again, remember, listen, I, listen, you have to bear, listen, you have to bear with me. I went to public school, right? So maybe, you know, maybe I don't, you know, maybe I'm mishearing some things, but the man said, what happened to the church? He said, yeah, I own the church, you know, um, I, uh, they came through, I, you know, a friend of mine, I want to put a name out there, told me about the, you know, these people, they bought the church from the auction. Yeah, and I bought it from them. I bought that. I bought it from them. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's not wrong with me being wrong. Sometimes, listen, I, ain't, I went to public school. What you want me to do? Right? I went to public school. What do you want me to do? Sometimes I can be wrong too. Right? But correct me if I'm wrong. This is what's this this is what's called an addendum, an addendum to purchase. So as to assist Lamar Whitehead's purchase of real property located at 5904 Foster Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, Lamar Whitehead is appointed to act as trustee of the 5904 Foster Avenue Trust with the following limited restrictions. Let me just go up a little closer. You know, in the event, because maybe you know, I wear glasses. Sometimes you guys wear glasses. Number one, to secure financing for him to purchase, to secure financing to purchase the real property located at 5904 Foster Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. And 
to commence and pursue an appropriate legal proceeding in a court of competent jurisdiction seeking a court order removing the current occupants of the real property. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, right? And I said, listen, sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong, right? And I, you know, I'm not perfect. Correct me if I'm wrong. That does not mean you purchased it. It just simply means you entered into an agreement with the owners of it for the limited purpose of seeking finances to purchase as well as moving forward to evict whomever's in the premises. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But let's just continue. Maybe, maybe I misheard him, right? Sometimes I don't, I don't, you know, I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe I need to get some, some Q-tips or something. I don't know. Let's continue. The people that was in the building, he was actually a pastor too. Mm. And he thought that I was going to rent him the church. And I said, no, brother, I'll help you get another church. Right. But I bought this from my church. Right. And he gave me all hell. And what he did was he started to lie. And since I was in the press, they manipulated the media and said that I stole their building. So we have a building, right? I have a building that seats over 500 people. It's on um, 12,000 square, square foot, right? And it's still in my building right now. Wow. Because New York City is a landlord friendly, I mean, excuse me, tenant friendly state. Yeah. So all they're doing is getting me caught up, I mean, tied up in the court system. Yeah. And they're lying saying they own the property when they don't. So we've been battling with them for now over two years, and they're in my property paying no rent at all. But yet they're doing interviews and saying that I stole their church. And I, even, I never even knew it existed until my real estate right. first it came to me, right. and I purchased the church. Hmm. So now everybody, you'll see people saying, oh, he stole the church, he stole the... That's all lies. I tell people, go on Acuris. There's a, there's a website in New York. It's called Acuris.com. You will be able to see the DNA, the history of this building. DNA. Wow. All you got to do is research, and you're going to see that Bishop Whitehead owns the building. That's it. it there's no hanky-panky. There's no other stuff. Right. But yet, once again, they capitalized off you know, of what right. I was going through. Yeah. A, a bishop said to me, uh, after being famous, the only thing you can do is become infamous. Uh, and uh, I believe that God can heal people from cancer. I believe that God can bring people out of rehab and out of addiction. Uh, but you are believing God can restore a name. Mm -hmm. uh, and you got so much faith that you believe God can do it in a small window of time. Yes. Uh, I'm praying that uh, God will do that uh, for you. I'm uh, grateful that uh, you trusted me to be able to create space. Because they wrapping this shit up. Uh, and I hope that particularly people in the body will not judge a book by its cover. Even if the cover of the book out on Fendi. Uh, it's like, uh, <laughs> All right. That we still got to stand with it. Know that I am praying with you and for you. And uh, I'm believing that we have not heard, not even the beginning of Bishop Lamar, not Lamar, Lamar Whitehead. And I uh, know that you got somebody in Atlanta who is praying for you. You all, I want you to please uh, pray for our brother uh, because the fog is lifting. And you know, we only do one thing. We got to be clear. Yeah. Thank you so much, Frank. Love you, man. Thank you, brother. Love you more than that. I need you to do me a favor. Please make sure that you like, follow, and subscribe uh, to Jamal Bryant Podcast. Let's be clear on our YouTube channel. All right, whatever. You ain't going to do nothing. Like, we ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. Wow. So that was a lot, B. That was a lot. Which I think. Put a one in the chat if y'all believe that motherfucker. Guilty to the motherfucker. Put two in the chat if you believe you're innocent. One in the chat, if you believe that moment, guilty in the mall. Two in the chat, if he's innocent. If he's convinced you from this interview that he ain't do it, that he's obviously innocent, put a two in the chat. But if this moment was guilty in the mall, he did all that, and then some, put a one in the chat. <laughs> Y'all don't give this man no space. Y'all don't give him no space. Y'all just be, look, you did this shit, nigga. Key. Y'all give him no space. 
So that's my take. What's my take? What's my answer? How do I answer this? Well, like most, if not all of the things that he said, even if he come up with something new, even when he come up with something new, it's still the same. Remember, guilt and innocence is a work, is a term of art. Guilty just simply means the prosecutor proved their case against you. They proved each and every element or whatever the charge you stood accused. And a jury appears or judge found you guilty. Innocence simply means that the prosecutor did not prove the elements against you. That's all it means. It doesn't mean you did it or didn't do it. Just like guilty. It doesn't mean you didn't or didn't do it. It just simply means they did or did not prove the elements of the charge. When you look at his testimony, his own testimony, forget everybody else's testimony, forget, even forget cross-examination. When you look at his direct testimony, the most favorable testimony that one should have for themselves. Even his lawyer said, okay, so it was a came a point in time when they wanted the money back. Why not give the money back? His response wasn't, well, you know, I didn't owe it or I never took the money in the first place. His response was because they sued me. When they cornered him on an on a, on a aspect of the making a false statement, his response was, I didn't say that. His response wasn't, I pled the fifth. His response was saying, yeah, they asked me if I have another phone. I said, no. Despite the fact that earlier that day, you text a motherfucker. You caught the motherfucker. And then even after they took your original phone, you text and call somebody. So whether or not you had a phone or you had another phone of which I can call you on, if you answer no, it's not true. But more importantly, during his testimony, the most appropriate time to make that very distinction, because if you're saying that the prosecutors, I mean, the feds didn't ask you whether or not you had a phone, but they ask you whether or not you had a phone with the qualifier so I can call you on, you should have let that be known there. You should have specifically said, well, when they ask me, do I have another phone on which they could call me on? I believed, no, call my lawyer. Don't call me. And no, I don't have nothing you could call me on. Keep it very literal. Because I believe, I literally believed, or at least I really believed that he believed, or he was asking me whether or not he could call me on the phone that he know me on. Baby, you ready? Did you turn off the YouTube? Because it's going to be back. It's going to be um, feedback. All right. All right. You, you got to turn me off. You got to look at me. Let's look at your phone because it'd be feedback. All right. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Let's pull baby up. Let's pull baby up. What's up, baby? Hey, what's up? Yeah, what's up? First off, what's up with your, where your daughter at? You know what? She's probably asleep now because oh, you she, know, nice she, she gets up at like crack a lack in the morning. She gets up like. <laughs> At gazillion o'clock, five okay. o'clock in the morning. Okay. So she probably trailed off okay. eons so, ago. So talk to me. What's your position? After watching this interview, as painstaking as it was, are you for or against? Are you are are we convinced that he's innocent or are you still on a position that he's guilty? And, you know, we, I'm still like talking, about your, we're talking about your favorite position. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I have some questions because listen, you said you was at his church a few, a few times. How often does he give that plate around? Does he give it once and that's that? No. So, so that's a lie. That's a lie. And then um, I can't remember how many times to be honest, mm -hmm. but I know when he started talking about, you know, what you're going to get back, you know, that prosperity mm -hmm. thing going mm -hmm. on. I just was holding on tight to my, my pocketbook. <laughs> It's like, no, you're not getting mine. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when he came out there with all that. Um, he had on the um what they stole from him. He mm -hmm. had chains and chains. And I was like, is that first of all, I worked in the Diamond uh district on 47th Street years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, all the C's, the clarities and all of that. And I was a little sus when I saw his stuff because it wasn't like it wasn't 
bling bling and like you know I thought it should mm -hmm. and so that you know that was a little suspect but for him for him to put out there that like a, over a million dollars was stolen allegedly mm -mm, I don't think so but anyway just seeing what he had on and everything and the car outside and everything I was like you're not getting none of my money sir but the few people that were there it wouldn't have made a difference anyway if he went if he had the collection plate going around a thousand times those people didn't have money like that mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it wasn't even a lot of people in there to sustain the type of lifestyle you know that house i mean look at that house the maintenance on that house alone you yeah, know it's a couple hundred thousand absolutely yeah you know so Absolutely. whatever not to mention question. whatever whatever like you know help you know like exactly or whatever yeah exactly and seeing her his wife she had the red bottom i mean i got a couple of red bottoms too you know but this girl had the red bottoms the big two carat earrings and the big diamond ring and you know i she she had on the roly and you know she was just like and the hair was she didn't have any raggedy roots at that time when mm -hmm. i saw her you know so i'm looking at them and i'm saying their lifestyle speaks to who got a jobby job oh, <laughs> right you got where the money who, where is this money coming from right. is it we so did. what's the what's the this whole thing that she's no longer with him mean, how 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 true she's is that? not I, she's not so what's that about tell me talk, talk about that a little bit I wish I could tell you the without without obviously without violating confidence confidences or whatever secrets. Yeah, because that you I have. got I got the real tea, <laughs> but I can't really real. What's June thirtieth? I'm telling all. You want right? it's July. It's, it's so June thirtieth, the day before you tell him. So listen. yeah, because it don't matter at that point. You get what I'm saying? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So what's the, maybe, what would be the difference? Matter, huh? What's the difference then? Because if it, a secret is a secret, it should kind of die with you, right? So no, you know why? Because I, I like I don't say anything on his page, mm -hmm. and I don't say anything on her page. Mm -hmm. Shawnee says he doesn't know who I am. But I think he does. As you can see, I change my hair all the time, right? Mm -hmm. This is me. Mm -hmm. But I'll throw a long wig on in a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, and the last time that he saw me, and I went up to him. Matter of fact, I said, I know your wife and your mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And he was at my church. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah. And he, that's that greasy grin, you know, and... um. I, you know, it was funny because he was looking at me like, and so what, you know, and then he sees me on his page. Shawnee says, she don't think he remembers me, but I say, I think he does, but I never say anything. Cause I don't want him to block me <laughs> because the minute I say something, you know, he going to block me. Right. Same thing with her. Cause she already warned people on the BOC don't come <laughs> sideways because she going to, she's, she's going to block you. Mm -hmm. So people know better with her too. Mm -hmm. But the thing to answer your question about her, he, if you see him yelling and screaming, you know, and cussing and calling people names and all of that, can you imagine what he says to her or what he would do to her? And, and knowing what he did to his ex-wife, do you think that a zebra really changes their stripes like that? Or, or can, and let me ask you, do you think it could get worse if you don't get help? Lions live with lions. Right. That's true. So you don't typically when have lions lion living runs, with. When a lioness runs. Still a lion. Not giving no excuse to her, but a man, I can't come up, with, I, I could cuss you out all day long. But mm -hmm. if you put, if you put hands on me, Hmm. I, I really don't stand a chance. Right, but you're not a gazelle cussing. You're a lioness cussing. So you do have some force behind that cussing. Gazelles aren't yelling at no damn lion. They're docile the entire time. Well, a, a lioness will slap the shit up out of a lion, play fight yeah. with the lion, bite the lion, starve a lion out. All of the stuff that a lioness would do. Right, but right. you don't bite the hand that feeds you either. But you're still a lion. You're still a lion. But again, you don't see if you like the plate you eating off of, mm -hmm. 
you eat crow to a certain till it gets to the point. Of course. To, right. I don't so, I don't expect a lioness challenging a lion. Of course. Well, challenging to the extent that okay, this is my kingdom. I don't expect that, but it's still a lioness. So, so I say this. I'm I say not, that I'm to say this. Her no slack. Don't give right. Me I say that to say this. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of people when they look at the female male dynamic, a lot of times. When it's a man being a batterer, the idea that the woman did anything is not even a thought. Not the not the victim blame, mm -hmm. right? But you have to recognize what a batterer is. A batterer don't just, hey, my name is Joe Blow and punch you upside your head. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It's a lead up, right? Right. Now, when you have mutual batterers, one typically get the better of the other, especially when it's a sex dynamic, because just simply by force, strength, size, you know, might, and all of that other stuff, right? Very rarely, and I've been doing this for a long time, very rarely do you have somebody who is truly being battered and they played absolutely no role in it. And when I say no role, I'm not saying that. First of all, this is two things I'm not saying. I'm you mean saying it's okay. it in some kind of way? I'm saying not even that. That too, but role in a sense of allowing it to get to the point where it's that. Because a man will just punch you upside your head. A woman will just punch you upside your head, destroy your cars. And when I say battery, it's not limited to men. Because no, you, have, you have men that don't do shit that won't, won't would even think about hitting a woman back simply because of the way they was raised. And some women are just that kind of person where they're 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 batterers, they're they abusers, right? And I don't necessarily mean that they're physical abuse, it could be mental abuse, it could be physical, it could be psychological abuse, it could be sexual abuse, financial abuse, many different types of abuse. Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't just start like that, right? No, so so um the way in which he left his ex-wife was horrific. Remember, yeah. listen, he left her not only did he leave her in essentially squalor. Right, she left. She lost the house, her house, actually. And she was right? sick. She had she had cancer that she had to over mm -hmm. she had to overcome. Her parent mm -hmm. died. She was raising a kid by herself, and then subsequently, the people that he ripped off sued her. Someone so tried to get her arrested. So the condition that he left her was crazy. And then when he came home, he went back and tried to get the property that she had by allegedly falsifying a power attorney document document to go to Acris, as he liked to say. To mm. switch the switch, the, switch mm. the titles over so the D could be in his name so he could do whatever it is he wanted to so you know yeah he did a he did pursue a a, a, a crazy chain of events against his ex wife, mm -hmm. but before he got to that point of doing that before it became two thousand and eight and then two thousand and twelve when he came before it got to that point she was with that man throughout the course of two thousand one mm -hmm. two thousand two two thousand three two thousand four. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. everything in which he was doing. Mm -hmm. I've never had a listen, mm -hmm. I've never had a client, never had a client who came in that was married or even had a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Wife or the girl didn't know what they were doing. Did you, you 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 I hope you don't think that's what I'm trying to say here. I'm not saying that. I'm okay. just saying that the lions live with lions. Mm -hmm. Right? If you don't smoke crack. You're not going to be living with a crack addict. Right. If, you just in not. A, if you're not a, uh, if you're not trying to get a haircut, why are you in the barbershop? You're not going to be in a barbershop. It's right. just the reality. Now, of course, you have your extremes, right? If, you know, mm -hmm. I know, I, you know, I don't know nobody that knows. I don't know nobody like that today. But sometimes you may have your extremes. Listen, we all have family members who, who uncle just wasn't right. Or pops yeah, it's or crazy. Right. It's just what it is. We have family members like that. So we're going to find that. But those are far in between. Ordinarily, you're not going to be somebody that's a... You know, upstanding citizen and don't disabstain from all that stuff, dealing with somebody that's entrenched. You may have somebody masking as such, but they're just as entrenched as the other individual. Mm -hmm. They may not be out there pitching crack, but they're going to take that tax money so that man could flip it to pitch the crack. Mm -hmm. Or they may say, okay, you know what? I'm going to take the kids out so you can go bag up. Oh, you know what? Give me the money and I'll put it over here. Oh, yo, you know what? I put right. it in my name. Right. They are complicit in everything. Right. Lions right. live with lions. Right. 
right? So when I look at what happened with his ex-wife, and I'm definitely not saying what happened to his ex-wife is, was, was, was just in any accord, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, all the makes and the Range Rovers and the, and the Diamonds, she, she enjoyed, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. let's just say everything that the prosecutor and the government has said about Bishop Whitehead today. Mm -hmm. I don't know when he met his ex-wife, his current wife. I don't know mm -hmm. what their relationship is. I don't know her, right? But it's hard for me to believe that she does not know how he got that mansion that he Absolutely. lives in today. Absolutely. Right? Correct. So, Absolutely so, correct. A thousand so, percent, as he would say. So lions live with lions. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why I asked you, what happened? Why would she leave? You know, Because that's my ultimate goal. Why would she leave? You want to know why she left? Mm -hmm. And if, that's if, the part that I, true. I, 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 I can don't, tell you I'm the not answer. Saying it's true I, could, I, can't, I can't say the answer mm -hmm. live, like now. You know, but I do know the answer. Okay. I do know. Let me just put it this way. She's told somebody mm -hmm. that I know. Okay. So we know the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um to your to your statement, to your comment about a line a line and a line is you're absolutely right. But at the end of the day, when stuff starts getting real sticky and it looks like Yo, self preservation is yo. This is self preservation. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, you got to do. If what the you house gotta... is burning down. It may sound cute to be like, "Oh, I'm a dumb." I'm a... You jumping out that? Listen, this when, last you, week, when you was... when you when you when you on on the plane, they tell you, yeah, save, save, save first. These, yeah. <laughs> listen, last week, listen, last week or week before last, whenever the hell an earthquake was, I was literally, literally <laughs> know, walking to a deposition. <laughs> The, the building, it didn't even shake fully. It kind of like, come out. Like, I didn't even, and I'm, listen, I can handle myself. Please yeah. understand that. I'm not saving a goddamn person. I'm that's out. just, that's just what happened. Now, listen, I, was my family members wasn't there. These are fucking people I work with. Oh, well, hope, good luck. I'm out. Right? Now, obviously, if I was home, maybe if, you know, if my family was there, then yeah, I've been in circumstances where I had to, place myself in compromised positions for my family. I've been mm -hmm. I'm from New York, man, shit happens, right? And I'm mm -hmm. raised in the 80s and the 90s, stuff happens, mm -hmm. right? So I've been in circumstances where I actually had to be that shield, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a life, very rarely does, does a woman, not a man, because remember, we're, we're kind of like built and taught and, and programmed to Stick sacrifice your life, right? Mm -hmm. Stick and set. Mm hmm Women aren't. So it's rational and likely that she would leave. And then she should leave to the extent that she has to create a safe environment, both physically and psycho and psych psychologically for children, because they got kids. No, right? so, well, well, no, they got one child together. But they got kids in their household. So they my got, understanding, they, they have, have two children in that household. Okay, so. And that's her child. Mm hmm with another man and um, the baby with mm -hmm. him and her together. Right. So, but not the other regardless. two are living with the parent, the the, the mother. All right. But, but notwithstanding that, the, the uh, notwithstanding the technical fact, the fact of the matter is, is children in a house that she has to make. She has to create a safe environment to some capacity, right? So even if she wanted to stay. She would have to abandon ship on that accord, right? She just have to because mm -hmm. it's a hard reality for children when mm -hmm. a parent, whether male or female, has to go away for a while. I mean, we're not in the 80s no more where your uncle went to, to school. Right. Or, no, they know. know. You know, like social media is a motherfucker. Yeah, they know. It, and they post everything. And they, and they don't post it in a favorable light. It's always yeah. some chaos, right? Even yeah. if that's not true. It's, that's what's being posted. It's whatever sells, whatever gets the most clicks, you know, that's just the reality. So she would have to, you know, just on that accord. And I'm not saying abandon ship because I think if you are a part of the ship, you know, go with it all the way. But yeah, but on some mm -hmm. accord, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta create some sort of safety net of something. And you know, he's going to go away. It's just the reality. But he may see, not want to look at this reality. The part of it is, like you said, for the safety. And then the other part was 
I know this ship is going down and I, I'm not going down with it and there's mm -hmm. nothing else in it for me. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, now, that's a, and that's because, the serious part. That's the that's the real nasty. That's the nasty Alice, part. Alice and, see, part. And, that, and, 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 and even though I don't like this guy, I do feel like, you know, that was messed up that you would just jump ship you know, you're not a ride or die, you know, when things you're, you're out and then you're on your BOC and now you're dumbing everything down. So now we don't see no jewelry. We don't see no Fendi or Louis Vuitton. You don't see the Christian Dior. You see one little amethyst ring. You don't see not even cause you can get a little cheap gold wedding band to say I'm still married. Mm -hmm. But you don't even see that. You see an Apple Watch, you know. Um, you see, you, you know, the, the hair isn't done done. You know, there was a beauty salon that one of my, I call them, see around the way, they all call me baby. And everybody knows me around the way as baby. And they're like, I'm not the auntie or the godmother or whatever. My mother was, forget it. She raised everybody, but there's a couple of them that know her very well and would go to the house and they would talk about how, wow, they had everything, you know, downstairs was a beauty salon because he didn't, you know, want her to get her hair done anywhere. And it was always done, you know, but I'm saying that to say now, I don't think it's so much that she can't afford it. That it is that, but it's not so much that she can't afford it. It's that she wants everybody to think now I am living this humble, Christian, holy, sanctified, holier than thou life, you know, and so a seed. And today we're going to call the seed shut up. We're going to call the seed, uh, let's go. You know, she makes every day you sowing a seed. Now, Somebody would say, well, you know, because she's not working. So how she maintaining where she lives or the car that she's driving? Because you got to think of her expenses. Mm -hmm. You know, the little girl is not in any type of daycare or anything, which I think she should be because the little girl is horrible. Oh, my God. I hate to say it about a baby, but that little girl is terrible. Okay. But she doesn't have a interacting with other school age kids. She doesn't have a daycare or anything like that. So she don't have to pay for daycare. But there's other expenses that she has to incur, I'm sure. And if she gets maybe, say, $100 a day from seed sowing times five, that's $500 a week tax free. You know what I mean? And we're looking at what? $2,000 a month. And then she has a little speaking engagements that they pay for or whatever, but it still doesn't substantiate or equal to what she was getting when she was with him. You know what I mean? And my other daughter swears that she giving him some money too, because he ain't got no money. He, I think he broke his Ten Commandments as well. <laughs> but, yeah. I think so. I really do. I really do. But, but long story short, to answer your question about wh why did she leave, I think it was because the ship was sinking and because of some other things that I can't really talk about right now. But, yeah, she's gone. She's not there. That's a definite. But my question to you, Mr. CKB, before I go. Talk, talk about it. Is he said something about the mistrial. Now, I know he put in the motion and then... The government responded. Mm -hmm. You read that to us last week. Mm -hmm. So now he gets a chance to do it again. How's that work? So he's out of his mind. I think I, well, we know that. Mm -hmm. So when you get convicted of a of a of a crime, the next stop is appeal. If you decide to appeal, however, in between that time and that next stop, meaning conviction to sentencing, if the judge don't just sentence you immediately. You have a whole bunch of things that you could do in between that time. One of the things you could do is motion to set aside the verdict, saying the weight was against the um, the evidence was against the, was was it sufficient to find a person guilty, mm -hmm. or two ask for um, a new trial, right? And at asking for a new trial is you saying some due process you you was violated some some due process right, whether it's the Fourth Amendment, something happened throughout the course of the trial that warrants a new trial. Mm -hmm. 
oftentimes, and this is what I said a little earlier, oftentimes, at least majority of lawyers that I know that that has a significant amount of experience with, they say, yo, listen, if the judge is ruling on this before your sentence, it's likely they're gonna they're gonna rule in your favor. And they and they would say, well, we're gonna hold a hearing, right? And it's the hearing will be scheduled out maybe a week or two before sentencing. Oh. Then they're gonna rule in your favor. But let's just say if the judge say, you know, well, we're gonna reserve decision until sentencing, not some sentence is gonna deny it. But that's not really a good barometer because you know, some it doesn't you really can't tell with these damn judges. In any event, to answer your question most specifically. If the judge grant him a new trial by this Rule 33 motion, then he will have to start the whole thing over, meaning he will have to pick a jury, have to hire new attorneys if he doesn't have the same attorney and continue on, right? Um, which is a, which is a possibility because he has this motion, which that, and that's the relief he's seeking. Just as well as the motion to set aside the verdict, if the court set aside the jury verdict, then... It could, it could very well be the judge rule on whatever the counts are. Now, again, I've been doing this for a long time and I've never seen it done. The only success that I've ever had with a motion to set aside the jury verdict was when it was a drug offense up in fucking upstate New York where this kid was convicted for selling candle wax. Mm -hmm. It's the a, a controlled substance case is it actually has to be a controlled substance. You can't convict somebody of a drug sale and it's fucking... It wasn't drugs. Yeah, and it wasn't drugs. That's just the law. However, they was able to find him guilty because it was like a little small facet within the statute that goes along with intent. And the intent is if you believe it to be drugs, then you can be found guilty of it, even though it's not drugs. And that supersedes the idea that it's drugs or not. However, in this case, I was able to prove that he knew it wasn't drugs because I had the receipt from Walmart that went where he went and bought the candy wax from to bag it up. Mm. Right. So that's how I was able to get around that. I mean, I don't want to get too much in the, the facts of it. Mm -hmm. but that's essentially how I was able to get around that. But as it pertains to any other time. And I mean, I've been in front of cases where trials where it's nowhere near the amount of evidence that they got against Bishop and they okay. still deny it. OK. Right. It's real, real because judges don't want to come into a habit of setting aside jury verdicts because the jury be like, well, why, why the fuck we here? Yeah, it's like, why, why you right? know, why you, have a jury? Right. right. So, so, mm -hmm. and, and even though you may have cases where that should be, it won't give a good precedent. It, well, it wouldn't be, you would kind of def defunct the idea of jury duties because, you know, when you do, you're doing jury duty, you're supposed to take it serious. You're supposed to listen to the facts yeah. and then rule, I mean, decide as the court charges you, right? It's a, it's a, it's a whole process and we're supposed to take this serious as we, right. as we are required to, right? So if you have courts, I mean, um, juries just being set aside here and there, then nobody's going to, because it was like, regardless of what I say, you're going to just turn it around. So nobody's going to have the faith in it. Right. right. And that's and that's and that's similar to why you typically don't see a lot of police officers getting arrested and indicted, because if you see all of these cops getting arrested and indicted, we're going to lose faith. Right. In, in, the police, in the police. Right? Right. And, right. and all of these other law enforcement agencies. So even though they commit all the crimes, you kind of like don't want to do that. And, it, and it's, you know, unfortunately, that, so, that so, so not to control, but to be clear, though, see, can be, it, he filed the motion. Yes. And then. The government responded. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. So th is that it? Or does he have a certain amount of time to respond? Not nah, so he doesn't have the, he doesn't he didn't ask the court didn't schedule a time for him to reply. At least I don't think so. Let me see okay. something. I mean, I'm in his docket okay. right now. Let me see if he has a reply date. I don't recall. He's making it sound like he's gonna go back, you know. He could he make a reply to that. Like I always will reply. Well, first, what with these with, with with criminal criminal cases, you can, you kind of want to ask the judge for permission to do a lot of stuff, especially when you don't have a right to it. And like, he doesn't have a right, a constitutional right to have the jury set aside, or at least file a motion for him. So you typically want to ask the court, and he probably get like a probably, probably like a, well, not him, his lawyers probably ask. For a hearing to just entertain whether or not they would do uh, a reply to it. But a reply would just essentially address whatever it is the prosecutors say, which again, it doesn't necessarily matter because your arguments is what they are. Mm -hmm. And and the court is gonna rule however it rules. These motions, for the most part, is really to preserve it for appellate view. Like I, when I even write these motions, I'm not even thinking about review, like relief. I'm, you know, of course, you're gonna tell a client, oh, yeah, you have a chance. Man, you ain't having no chance. Okay. It's just to preserve it so the appellate attorney, whoever you hire or you get appointed, 
could could have something to raise because mm-hmm. you know and a lot of t- after after you've been sentenced yeah after you've been sentenced after you've been sentenced and you're you're sent away mm-hmm. you have to do something to raise this is more among other things but then sometimes these arguments aren't even raised even raised because it's like the courts, like, it's rare that the court would give you, when I say court, I mean like the appellate court, even the United States Supreme Court, it's rare that they give you these kind of arguments when you're saying the jury got the facts wrong. Mm-hmm. They give a lot of deference to the jury. They don't want you, they don't want people to think that, you know, the jury is worthless, even though a lot of times they do be worthless. And he can't bring in, um, he can't bring in new evidence. I mean, it is what it is right now, right? At this point, he, no. He, so he, he would have to... He's telling Jamal all this stuff that, I'm like, well, not that so, I believe him, but to answer, to answer your question, he can, but no, oh, can. not at this time. He will have to file what's called a 2255 motion, and that's equivalent to like a, a, a motion that's equivalent to like a, like a post conviction motion. And post conviction mm-hmm. motions, when you could bring information evidence that wasn't on a record, mm-hmm. right? But in the feds, you have to do that after you've exhausted your appeals. So okay. he has to go through the whole oh, long drawn oh, okay. out process of appealing his case and all getting denied and going to the United States Supreme Court that getting denied. And then he could bring in this this new motion saying that, oh, I was a problem of a fair trial because of this, because of that. But even 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 if so, the little bit that he did say to Jamal, which which the only thing and I gleaned from it to me, was him, the, him saying that the, the, the Fed slammed his head on the ground or whatever. That's what he said. He said he slammed his head on the ground or, or threatened to slam him and threatened to force him to open it. Well, you know, whatever he said, which in sense infringes on his Fourth Amendment right. He could have raised that now. And the fact that he didn't raise that now, it's a due diligence doctrine that all lawyers are, are required to exercise. Mm. And due, due, due diligence doctrine simply means you have to move with diligence. You have to bring stuff with diligence. If you have, if you know of information, you have to bring it. You can't you bring it. hold on into it with some strategy, some gamesmanship strategy that you're going to raise it later on. No, you got to bring that now. So this rule for 2255 motion it has to be on stuff that like maybe you raise the ineffectiveness as a counsel and you could bring it in that way or stuff that you, you couldn't, even with diligence, you wouldn't have learned of it back then. Mm-hmm. Right. So he said he has videos of it. He says he has this and that. None of his motions does he make mention mm-hmm. of it. None of the even even at trial, he doesn't ask the court to bring it in. And in a, the prosecutor definitely don't ask the court to preclude it because I read all this shit. Right. right. So what is he talking about? The 301 something? What was that? 302. Those are just doc, those are just. All right. So it's all right. So it's this. Remember, you ever notice I say it was certain things I can't say. Yeah. Because if it's an active case, you can't, you, you're the lawyer, the, the paralegals or whomever work with you, and it's both with the prosecution as well as defense, they can't speak about certain stuff because that could that could taint the, 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 due, the due process of the case. That could paint the fairity of the case. Just as well as a person can't just go in public in his grandstand making a whole bunch of lies and accusations because that could taint the case. Even though he does that. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Take, take the case. So what he was essentially saying is this information that that only the people that's a part of the case should know is information that he's kind of speaking about. I don't know what, what significance of him making mention of it because it's not like he's saying that came out in the public or maybe the, the police released it because they did it, mm-hmm. right? He did make mention of it slightly when he said that um, Brandon Belmonte made this interview in a New Yorker and a brand of Amante made this interview releasing information that this, that the public wasn't privy to. And they actually had a hearing with that. That's when he had Brandon, Brian Ponder and a hearing was based on, I think it was a rule. I can't remember what rule it is. Rule, rule 11, rule seven. I can't remember what rule it is, but that's a rule, rule, rule violation where you can be sanctioned for. In fact, you can get locked up for that. By, by by releasing stuff that you shouldn't release. And the government's response was, well, he's not a part of the government. He's not even an agent of the government. He was just somebody right. that we used for this particular particular limited purpose. And now that, we don't even have any intention of calling him. This was two years ago they made mention of this. Yeah. Right? So, mm-hmm. so I guess he's trying to, or maybe he forgot how to say it, but I guess that's the direction he was going. But he again, their script was kind of like not a real script. Whatever that whatever wow. they intended on talk about at that interview wasn't really meted out initially. But um 
Yeah, so like, so him saying at three hundred two, that that didn't make any sense because he didn't like say, well, yeah, because this evidence was released and was leaked and it violated my due process right. Like, and see, this is why I'm asking you because you know how many. If I'm asking you this question, because I'm thinking it's significant. Do you know how many people that, like the gentleman that was on a little while ago, mm -hmm. that don't really know, obviously. That Limor could say <laughs> three o two two, and they'd be like, "Oh my God, there's yeah. something that's going on that we don't know." So I know they're lying, you know, whatever, you know what I mean. And it's so sad that Jamal would entertain that, not do his, because Jamal is not a well. I didn't think I didn't think he was a dummy until this interview. You know what I mean? Like you, he he said himself. Jamal said, I was a law student. I, I dropped out. Well, then you had to have at least a smidgen of the law. So you a, know lot of, I mean? a lot of these law students don't be knowing shit. Like, I, I have a lot of experience. Yeah, a lot but of, they don't, don't listen, they don't, a lot of these that dumb? It's not even that. It's, it's So you have one class in criminal law. Every law student, whether you're in Yale Law to the worst law school on, in the planet, everybody has, on their first year, they have criminal law. And then you can have maybe a clinic in criminal practice, maybe an additional criminal case, criminal um, adjudications or what have you. But that's just like theory. That's not like actually be, it's almost like somebody, it's like you go into a beautician school, right? And they teach you how to make, you know, how to create, you know, do people mm -hmm. here. It's different when you're in a field. Yeah. Because you got a doll that you're doing it for, but it's different when you're dealing with a, a nasty client or an unsanitary client, or you have to be able to be in a mix of things to really learn it. You can oh, have okay. all the theories in the world, right? You can have all of the, the examples and the hypotheticals that they put in front of you, but when you inside of it, it's a different ball game. So I say that to say this. You people are always gonna have like um their positions and opinions. And, uh, and I welcome it right. all. And I welcome it all. Mm -hmm. um, I stay away from my own opinions and limit it to the docket. That's the whole thing. You're more, you're, you're more, I can hear the defense attorney in you all the time. All the time <laughs> I hear the defense. You and Pam have the defense attorney hearts. Yeah, because Period. it's not, because it's not, the stuff we see is not fair. Mm -hmm. It's truly not fair. And then I kind of feel for the guy, uh, Lamonte. I kind of feel for the guy because he said things and you guys may not have, may not have appreciated it, but he said something that was that's resounding in terms of how criminal justice is 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 ran. It's ran on guilty pleas. It's not ran on a, a, a day in it's court. It's supposed to be the other way around. It's supposed it's to be the other way around, but it's not. And it's not because of the power that the prosecutors have mm -hmm. and how they can lean on that power. And they lean on the, the the fact that most people don't, cannot afford like like effective assistance mm -hmm. because the prosecutor case, excuse me, excuse me, the defendant case, it takes a lot of resources, time, and energy and people. A prosecutor has the ability to have thirty different prosecutors on one case. A criminal defense attorney is one case per criminal defense attorney, mm -hmm. right? And obviously, you know, the prosecutor's office, just as well as like a you know a legal aid society, are all overworked. Mm -hmm. Right, it's, a, it's an overwhelming amount of cases, right? But it's just the resources that the prosecutors could tap into, a defense attorney can't. Like prosecutors, it's, it's automatic. Listen, prosecutors, when a case happened, there's a prosecutor that go to the site. Like if a murder happened, there's a prosecutor that's going to that scene the day of. A defense attorney don't even know where the scene yeah, is. Yeah, I know that. I mean, I, you know, my uh, granddaughter, Shanice's daughter, uh -huh. is... Uh, She's NYPD. She's um, right. currently lieutenant. So she tells us a lot of stuff, too, as far as when they have an arrest and then it goes to the, you know, the yeah. DA and how the process of, you know, all of that is. So they have a they have a hold on it yeah, from the very the beginning. Process. When when a person get arrested, the defense attorney get like scraps. They get like just with the charges and that's it. Mm -hmm. Most of the times, like the person that is arrested, depending upon who they are, they don't trust nobody. They definitely don't trust the white man that's showing up. So mm -hmm. they're reluctant on telling them anything. They, they don't, they, they, you know, they have this warped sense of, oh, I could throw some money at it. And they get, like, it's, 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 the defense has such a tough time just catching up to mm -hmm. where the prosecutor started. Listen, mm -hmm. you have the, all of the cops is willing, is, is willing to lie 
to get whomever they arrested convicted. You have mm -hmm. all of the experts the prosecutor is going to hire is going to say whatever the hell to keep them checks coming. Yeah. Everything is 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 tainted and, and, and biased against the person that's accused, not convicted, but accused. Mm -hmm. right? So when listening to, to Lamont, like I've seen that so many times. And he said, yo, listen, I just pled guilty because I didn't want to go back. Now, he may have been a little inebriated, right? May have been yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. The reality. Just a little bit. <laughs> right? You got you got people who are sitting up in these counties. They're very, relatively dangerous. You know, they're being, you know, assaulted, beat up. The, the COs is beating them up. They want to get out of there. So they're willing to, yeah, I did it, whatever. I don't got to go to jail. I could get home today. All right, yeah, I did it. I cop out. That's the reason. You got people like Limor. And, you know, they sit in jail like he was incarcerated mm -hmm. and then they go to the law library and they get information they stay in the law library all day every day while they're incarcerated and they are pretty much self-taught taught not meaning that they get the right education education about the law you know what i mean and they come out and they're not rehabilitated and they do the same thing and at the end of the day, people like Limor, to me, to me, justice needs to be served. And it has been served as far as he's concerned. I really feel like that. The, 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 all signs point, point toward his guilt, you know, and he doesn't have any receipts or proof of otherwise. He, he really doesn't. He hasn't really justified the bank statements, the, 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 the IRS tax forms. They were never filed. He's never even talked about the PPP loans. He's never talked about, and, and there's a whole lot that's in those, in, 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 in that transcript that you have, hundred and what is it? 160 something pages that says, much more than he's ever spoken about on IG, on this podcast he just did, and that he will ever do in the future because he's not capable of telling the truth. <laughs> My mother used to say, if you lie, you'll steal. And that that's it, and it's fine, you know, at its finest. He he's 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 incorrigible, if you ask me. He needs to be a way where he won't do that to anybody else that lady whether she was 30 years old like somebody said on the chat tonight or 300 years old the fact remains your signature was on that check you deposited it into your account you cannot justify where that lady's hard-earned retirement money went you have no remorse for it and you use the excuse because they were suing me. So my lawyer told me not to tell. Come on. Stop playing with that. You know, don't play with it. He he's really, he's he's really, you know. So at the end of the day, I I want to say this too, and I'm gonna go. Jamal Bryant, he already had a suspicious or not too good reputation. This right here put the nail in the coffin. Well, listen, he's <laughs> All right, so you said a couple of things, right? Um, in terms of people who gets, gets arrested and they go in the law library, I think everybody that gets arrested and convicted of a crime should go in the fucking law library as opposed to going to a weight pile and working out. So that's one thing. But I think... I, they yeah, I, I agree with that. What else they going to do except go to church like he did and, right. and, and then try to become a, a makeshift pastor? As it pertains to uh, their transition from prison to streets, listen, it's... You'd be surprised how many judges are felons. So that that just mere, the mere fact that you was pro, you was prosecuted and convicted doesn't mean your life is over. And the problem with Bishop is that I don't know what it is he did. Well, I do know what he did, but I'm not going to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> but as it pertains to his transition out, he he appeared to just stop from he, he you know he started from the scamming, get arrested, went back into it. And continue on the, the path that he was at, or that he was in, right? And then it permeated from, uh, against from his wife, was ex-wife, 
to his his church and affairs, and his real estate business ventures, if you want to call it that, and everything else. It's almost like he it's like he didn't he didn't miss a step, right? So his ability to rehabilitate, I think he has certain pathological issues that he needs to address. Mm-hmm. As, it's like a kleptomaniac, mm-hmm. and 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 that's a, a pathology that 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 needs to specifically be addressed. It could be that's a trauma right. that he's overcoming. You know, I had a conversation with a with, with somebody actually today, and we was talking about like how you know how women wear makeup, wigs, or whatever. Men's makeup is their cars, jewelry, and clothes. Mm-hmm. Right, that's and true. a lot of people, you know, when you look at the 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 particulars of, of makeup or whatever. You know, some would say it's their heads. Others would say it's the hide, right? Mm. Now, you know, we we all we all heard. I think at least we all heard about the the little man complex and why how you have a little guy mm. in a mm-hmm. Hummer because mm-hmm. he's trying. But you, you know, you have you know he he's trying to you know show something that he don't got. So let me get all of this big stuff because mm-hmm. I'm lacking in different areas. Not to be too vulgar, mm-hmm. and I think that may be it with him. He suffers some some sort of traumatic issue, and I, I think I see somebody I in the chat said childhood. that he was a yeah. I, I think somebody, somebody in the chat said that he was an orphan. Now I don't know if they was I just, did. just I was okay. <laughs> all right. So let's see, you know who knows what he went through as a child. Like no. he was raised with his mother and his I mean his mother and his grandmother. He could have been you know abused. He, a whole bunch of stuff could happen, yeah. and this is how he compensate for that. Right. Yeah. His conversation is, I don't want you to see me. I want you to see what I want you to see because yeah. who I am, I'm ashamed of. He so don't want me, you to see who he really is. Right. And, so let me put know, all this for, stuff to mask. For all thing. intents purposes, I, I I certainly would pray for him. No, for real. Mm-hmm. I would pray for him because whether we want to admit it or not, I admit it, but some folks may not. He is still a child of God. He really is. Mm -hmm. He is. And, you know, the fact that he has so much, quote unquote, allegedly faith. I don't think he realizes that the grace that he's been given is to wake up every morning. You know, the grace may not be that you can run free, run rampant and do whatever you want to do again, you know, the way you did it. But. Even if you wake up in prison, you've been graced another day. Yeah, that's true. That's definitely true. Listen, like, 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 yeah. I don't think, I don't see, he's fa- He's not facing 45, he's facing 85 goddamn years. I just want to wow. be clear with that. But even, I don't think, I think, I don't think it's going to be where he gets sentenced to something that he will likely die in prison unless something befalls him. I think he's going to get another shot, right, in, in the streets. And I, I'm, yeah, he'll be too old though. Yeah, he's going to be aged out. But, but, yeah. but to your point, though, he's not in a situation where he's facing natural life or the death penalty. He's, he's in a situation where he has the ability mm-hmm. to come back out. So that that in itself is the grace, as mm-hmm. you just said. Remember, he may be in prison. He may not be able to move around, but he can still wake up. He said so, that. He said that but, but you know what was, what was uh, very alarming to me was that he said, um, it's not a life sentence. That's what he said. He said, and I'm still going to be a millionaire. Meaning, mm. when yeah. he gets out, he going to be a millionaire. Yeah. How you going to do that, sir? Are you going to rob Wells Fargo or Listen, uh, by the Federal time, Reserve Bank? I'll tell you one thing. By the time, if and when he gets out, I definitely won't be doing this shit. <laughs> I tell you that. So hey, look, I, I, I wonder if I'll live to see him get out. Okay. You'll live. Well, your baby, you'll live. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Y'all don't even know how old I am, but I ain't going to tell. Shawnee, let me just say, I, I can't even tell Shawnee's his age. But yes, we are I'm, of a certain age, okay? You are a certain age. Shawnee's, is, Shawnee's be doing me dirty. She need to come up and stop playing. Well, if I'm telling you that her, my granddaughter, her daughter is a lieutenant for NYPD, you can do the math. Listen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And she's been on the force for about 10 years now, 10 or 11 years. So we ain't no babies, but we just look good. Just look good. I, see, I, I know that's right. I Praise know that's God. right. Hey, I know that's right. Praise but God. listen, as always, you have always, always I, I welcome. I love you, KP. Thank you so much for taking the time with me. No and doubt. Everybody in the chat, you know I love you guys. No doubt, no doubt. Take care. Good night. All right, hon. Bye-bye. Yeah, man, this is one hell of a show, and I appreciate you all.
Let me give one more special shout out. One more special shout out before we go to Big Man Hotep with the three dollar holla. Appreciate you, champ. Appreciate you, champ. Listen, like I say all the time, like I say all the time, it's all appreciated. Also, want to give a special shout out to Mashir for the five dollar holla cash app. For the five dollar holla cash app. Definitely, 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 definitely appreciate you. Definitely appreciate you. Like I said, whether it's a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, ten dollars, a thousand dollars, whatever it is, truly, truly appreciate you. But listen, so my take is this: Did this interview show any sign, any semblance of innocence? Meaning the prosecution didn't prove their case? No. It did, however, pop the idea that it may be some newly discovered, some evidence that he didn't put out. But at the same time. Given his M.O., given how he moves, if you telling me the feds put their hands on him, forced him to do something, he didn't put it out there, or at least he didn't say it, even if he didn't have the footage to put it out, he didn't broadcast it as he's broadcasting it today, get the fuck out of here. I want to give a special shout out, a special, special shout out to everybody that pulled up. Thomasina, special shout out to you for the membership. Thomasina, special shout out to you for the ten dollar holla. Thomasina, special shout out to you for the ten gifted memberships. Open book, I see you, baby, for the three dollar holla. Uh, gifted one day, one two day, ten dollar holla. I appreciate you. Five, Thomasina again, five dollar holla. Harold, five dollar holla. Ga, lovely eyes, five dollar holla. Miss B's, $9.99. You already know, baby. You already know you've been a good supporter, and I appreciate you. Alice for the $2. She Shelly for the $1.99. Baby, that was just up for the $4.99. Shanice for the for the $1.99. B's O for the new membership. B's on Mars. I appreciate you. Keisha for the $10 holla. G for the $1.99. Right? Be woke, be woke for the 1999. I appreciate you. Deborah for the five dollar holler. Wanda for the 199. Big Hotep for the three dollars. And last but not least, Cross that just pulled in on the highway for the 1999 Super Stick. I miss the CKB. This is not a law student show. This is a show about a law student, a particular one. With for more than a decade, I've been in the state we call a legal business. Look. When it comes to criminal law, it's not much I haven't seen. I've been prosecuted at all, and I've also been on the side defending against the prosecution. Make sure you like, comment, share. And until next time, I'm Mr. CKB, and I'm out. <laughs> this is not a law student show. Don't judge me.